Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Hi, Joe. What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good, man. Are you How going you no headphones? I'll go no headphones, too. I always go no headphones, man. Not I don't know. Headphones? It's just, it, yeah, it locks me in in a weird way. In a weird way? Yeah, the headphones, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm talking to you. But now, you, like, I feel like we're having a conversation, and there's just the microphone in the way. Okay. But this feels like it's on the phone. Yeah, I noticed on your show, you'd never do headphones nah. on any of your podcasts. Yeah. No headphones. Never. Okay. It is what it is. Okay. Dude, your show is fucking badass. Mm. That Netflix show is very, very good. Did you watch it? You are. Yes, I did. Let's you, go. You are my favorite example of someone who took this pandemic and fucking rose through it. You you elevated through it. You you raised your stock while all the comedy clubs are shut down. Mm. No one's out. There. Everybody else is like trying to figure out what to do. They're doing Zoom stand up, which, <laughs> which lowers you because yeah. people get to see your stand up. Like it's gross. Yeah, you know you you figured out how to do it, man. You really did, and you did it in a a multimedia presentation form that really other people weren't doing, man. Yeah. It, you fucking nailed it. it was Thank awesome. you, man. Thank you. Thank you for being so supportive, man. Like those videos popped off because you started reposting them so oh my grateful. pleasure i love when people just get after it i love that yeah. you do that yeah you hustle yeah like you work hard yeah. obviously like it's super tragic corona and everything like that but like when i don't know for some reason i kind of thrive in chaos i don't know if that's like a new york thing but like I, when it happened that part of me was like oh yeah we're gonna win <laughs> we're, we're, I, literally I, remember, I told the guys right there i was like when they said everything is getting shut down i go we'll win guaranteed we had just put the studio in there. Like, I paid all the money to do the studio, and I had no clue how I was going to, like, make the money back. It was like, you know, when, like, the, the colonizers or whatever, like, they'd stop on the island, and then they'd, like, burn the ships? Yeah. Because if they weren't, everybody would be like, should we just go back to Spain? Like, it's right. really better. You know, right. there's, like, Spanish people and shit. And then we were just like, nah, we're going to fucking figure it out. Yeah. And then it happened. We tried a few things that didn't work exactly, and then... What did you try that didn't work? We did uh we did one thing that did work. We did like a talent show on Instagram Live. And that was sick. It was just Corona's got talent. And Corona beer sponsored it, so it looked kind of really? cool. Yeah, they just were like, yo, can we send you beers like Corona's? Cause nobody's buying Corona's. We're like, fuck yeah, this is How crazy. Ridiculous <laughs> is that that no one was buying Corona because of coronavirus. I know. That is so dumb. I know. It's wild. So we did that, that was cool. Then we did like I was just doing like straight to the camera stuff, and it was like um Kind of like long form, almost like talking to people, but it wasn't like comedic. It was more just like, hey, this is what's going on, you know? But for me, I was like, I want to be I want to be funny in what I do, you know? Like we have the podcast where we get to joke around and that's longer form. But like if we're going to create something like a piece of content, I want it to be funny. And then it was Bill Maher actually inspired it. Really? Yeah, that's snarky fuck. <laughs> That guy. <laughs> he, he's so snarky, he's bro. So snarky. But like, he, remember when he did that video where like um, he was saying why it wasn't racist to call it the Chinese virus? Yes. And yeah. it was this great video, yeah. and I got sent it by like ten different people, and like all different ages were sending it to me. Like my my fiance now is uh, mom and dad sent it to me, and like my boys were sending it to me. And I remember going, oh shit, like people need. People need like a like a safe way of of uh, describing their feelings, you know what I mean. Oftentimes, like comics, that's kind of what we do. Like we'll describe how people feel in a funny way, so all of a sudden it's okay and safe. But if you just said that at work, it would be racist. You know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Like uh, like sometimes having an opinion is super costly. You know. Right. So if you sure. so it's like, but if you can thread the needle, or we call like slice it thin, that's what we say on the show, like. Where you can say it in a way where it's not costly, other people will really be engaged with it because they'll be like, "Yeah, that's how I feel." It's just when I was trying to explain, it seemed kind of sexist, or it seemed kind of racist, or it seemed kind of this. And it's like if you can actually get it down to like just the nuance of what the issue is, you'll get it. And he just did that with that. He's like, he went through every virus. It was yeah. just named after something else. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, that's not. Yeah, I retweeted painful. that. I thought it was great. Yeah, he's he's got yeah. some great stuff sometimes. He's he, brave, he, man. Yeah. I, I I give credit to bravery. Yeah, he he's, is. He's brave. He's cocky. He's cocky. But we yeah. watched that and we were like, oh, we could do this way better. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. And you did. Yeah. 
It's um, what that is is like when you're just trying to call people out on things, like trying to make things more whatever, more sexist, more homophobic, more racist than they really are. Those people that that are doing that, mm. they need to take some heads because like they j those are free shots. Like they take these free shots, and there's no. Like you're really creating turmoil, yeah, in social media with that shit. Yeah. It, it, it fucks people's lives up. Yeah, and the people that do it, they never get ostracized. They never get called yeah. out. People just either agree or disagree. But when people just ri go ridiculous after someone for something that doesn't make any sense, yeah, like this is the year for that. Yeah, because the the pandemic exaggerated everything. It exaggerated everybody's fears. Yeah. Exaggerated everybody's anger. Everybody felt more helpless, and a lot of times when people don't feel well, they don't they don't look internally to try to fix themselves. Yeah, they attack yes. things around. Them. You're doing this to me. Yes, you're doing this to me. You're making yeah. me angry. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. They I love the yeah. one of the videos where you uh, posted all of the different titles of all these different articles about white people oh about yeah white men being yeah. toxic and your time is almost up and like yeah. that's that is, what we were trying to do man yeah. like in that piece we were just trying to talk about like like not everybody that voted for trump is racist but they were positioned that way by the media yeah and we were just sitting there and we're like what is the slice here? Like, I don't believe that. Like, you no. know, all of us have like a family member or friends that did. We know them. They're not racist. So what, why were they drawn to them? And we started to kind of like go back. And I think it was back then, like 2016. Like, there were all these articles. And they just kind of like positioned, I guess it kind of like positioned white dudes specifically as like responsible for all the evils in the world. And I guess the people in power are going to do the bad things. Yeah. And if white people are in power, they're going to do it. But I don't know if you can, like, make a blanket assessment on, like, everybody that has white skin with that. It's so, dumb. It's, it's dumb, right? It's just right? dumb. So, so you, yeah. could, you could say what it is. It's hateful. It's rude. It is actually racist. It's actually sexist. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just dumb. Yeah, it's, it's just a dumb. a dumb way to describe life. And yeah. the people that agree with it, that's, that's a real problem, is that there's a lot of lemmings out there that don't have a lot of time to sit through things yeah. and, and really think things out. Yeah. And they just agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the best is when white men agree oh that, yeah that is my favorite those are my favorite those those yeah. fucking gender race traitors yeah <laughs> those there are there are some the male the male feminists the male God. feminists that yes. are, are self-loathing uh, white guys yeah yeah they are the best they're, and they're, it's sad because the people that they're doing that to appease don't respect it no at all they think that they're pathetic yeah so they think that they're winning them over you know right. but they're not they're like i don't know it's real sad, man. All those feminists want to get gorilla fucked. All of them. <laughs> Every one of them. You think? They just want to get gorilla fucked by a guy who, like, the, like respects them. And they all they have the right boundaries, and they, they set up right. They feel comfortable, and then they have a couple of cocktails. And they're like, let's go. Mm -hmm. Like, they're strong. Like, There's feminists, a primal urge. Yeah, they tend to be strong women. Like, mm -hmm. feminists tend to be strong, powerful women. And I think one of the things that feminists react to aggressively is bitch men. And, you know, as weak men or mm. men who think they're strong but aren't, mm. you know, these asshole bosses that get in this position of power and they sexually harass women yeah. and they grab them and fuck with them and do things because they can get away. But they're really not strong men. Yeah. They're pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. So these bitch ass men, these feminist men, they think like, I've got the solution. I am the man of your dreams. Like, right. no, you're not. Yeah. You know, Jason Momoa is the fucking man of their dreams. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, a really nice savage. That's the man of their dreams. hundred percent. A guy who's not going to sexually harass them who also happens to be six foot four right. and built like a fucking football player. That's yeah. what they want. They they'll pretend the that they want a male feminist. Like, no, they'll dominate you and tell you what to do and ruin your life and yeah. make you hyphenate your last name. Right. They'll do all that shit. <laughs> Those guys who hyphenate their last name? Oh, my goodness. Bro, I Listen, told, I told we're either getting married or not, okay? You I told my, my girl. Last name, I told hooker. my girl. I was like, that's not happening. Not happening. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Delete. That, yeah, that is, that's one of those bitch moves. Yeah. They'll try to get you to do those things. Yeah. They don't want that guy. They yeah. want a man. I feel like strong women, I don't understand, I don't know how we put it in like quotes, but like strong women are not intimidated by strong men. They're not, but some strong women have been burned by so many dickhead men right. that they're just tired of men in general, and they don't have the time to, to look for nuance. Yeah. They don't have the time to look for, is this guy 
a stereotypical douchebag man, yeah, yeah, or is yeah, this yeah. guy a thoughtful guy who looks like a dickhead? Right. You know, there's both. Both those things are possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could look like a dickhead. Yeah. As long as you're sweet. If you're some fucking big mi- meathead dude who likes to go to the gym, but you read a lot. Yeah. And you're yeah. really interesting, and just, <laughs> you just like being yoked. That's possible. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to. That's like it. possible. Yo, what, what happened where dudes aren't allowed to be strong? <sighs> That's not like real. something happened where like if you go to the gym, you're automatically dumb. Yes. Like you're doing the thing yes. that helps you live longer. You know, the other side of that is if you're hot and uh-huh. you're a woman, you're stupid. But they're not. All right. All right. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why? For the no, same reason. Because it's easy. It's easier. That's yes. the same thing. Like it's an we, easier life. We were saying, like hot dudes are dumb. How often you meet a smart, hot dude? Or like funny. smoking hot. Or funny. They're not. They're not funny either. Very rarely. But and why would they be? Yeah. Like. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure when you were younger and you were in single days, you know, you were out there plowing, you probably were laughing at jokes that weren't as funny from a very attractive girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You do your best. Okay. <laughs> right? I mean, the same thing. There's probably some girl that's laughing at some handsome dude's jokes yeah, that aren't that funny. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you get in when you fit in. That's why you got to be like really kind of like wounded or something to be like funny and hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's got to be something severely wrong. Something happened when you were young. Yeah. Someone ignored you. Some yes. things went sideways. Or gay. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. Lesbian. Lesbian are, yeah. chicks are funny because they mm-hmm. know what it's like to get pussy. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Is that the key? There's a, a lot of that is the key because a lot of girls like humor and they're not that good at doing it, hmm. you know. So they like other people to make them laugh, right? You know, I mean, there are obviously very funny women. There's a lot of very funny female comics, yeah, yeah. but generally speaking, when you think of funny people, like Christopher Hitchens wrote a piece about this for Vanity Fair. Oh yeah, women are funny. A long time ago, right? And basically, he was trying to say that the women that are funny, mm-hmm. they tend to have like sort of uh, masculine humor. You know, yeah. like Roseanne or somewhere right. along those lines. You know, they, they ha- tend to have what he called dikey humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he just found them funnier because he likes masculine humor. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, also, he's a, he was a, a little bit of an intellectual troll yeah. because he liked to he fuck knew with what people. He was doing. He was, he's basically yeah. like a black belt who would walk up to white belts and <laughs> smack them in the face <laughs> a little bit. Like, come on, you want to roll? <laughs> yeah. Like, he would, he would drag them. <laughs> he was like Ben Shapiro before Ben Shapiro. Is that what you said? <laughs> well, he... he in, Half of Ben Shapiro's different. clips are like, I'll roast this feminist that's a freshman in college. It's like, you're supposed to. Yeah. Like, that's what you do. Right. Well, right? The clips Didn't online, you go to Harvard? Yeah. Yeah, people have a love hate relationship with Ben Shapiro. Every time I defend him, people get mad at me. I like the guy. Yeah, you can like, like him. him. I like him. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, you I like, like talking him. To him. He's just a little corny. To yeah, me. He, well, he's wrong about stuff. I think. I also, mean, just I like let it go. Does he ever stuff? just relax? Does he ever no. just like chill out? Just no. like fucking hang out. He talks a hundred miles an hour. I know. He doesn't have time to relax. Just chill, dude. Yeah. Do you never like have him like not hit the weed or whatever, but like the hookah or that something? Would help him. That yeah. Do you imagine if you gave that guy an edible? What kind of hole that he would fall into i want to see him sing whap Ooh. then <laughs> that would be fired <laughs> we got to get ben high ben come on the show that's, we'll smoke that, weed together that song is a funny song because if you if that song was about hard-ass dicks mm. there is no way it would be so publicly and culturally acceptable to yeah. talk about hard-ass <laughs> dicks yeah. it is cool that wetness has become their like uh, like judging point for pussy, like because we didn't really know what it was. You was tightness for a while, yeah. You know what I mean? But like tightness, they can't really control. But sure wetness, they can. you can. Yeah. Like what? Kegels? Kegels? Yeah. Exercises. There's competitions. Have you been with loose vagina? Have you had loose vagina? Um, not like ridiculous. That's a tough question because if you admit it, it's like. What maybe happened? you aren't filling up yeah, that. Maybe, maybe you got a little dirt. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, they, obviously, they do vary. <laughs> they have to vary. They vary. They have to. Yeah. But we don't talk about that. No, we don't. We don't talk about volume in mm-hmm. pussy. Like, right. there's just pussy is great. Yeah. See, What's this? this woman is, uh, she's got a hole in her pants and she's lifting weights with her pussy. Oh, she and has like, uh, yeah. So she literally has like a little hole in her pants. Usually they're Russians for some strange reason. Mm. But uh, these, there's women that clamp down on their pussy. They put like a, I don't know, like a rubber thing in there right. to hold it in place, to squeeze on it, and they lift weights with it. Yeah. But there's a God bless. There's a woman who's like got a world record. Look That's at this chick. Is. is this her? Yeah. I don't know. I, I want to see how. What is the hole in her pants? I, mean, I don't even see a hole. Impressive how quickly Jamie got this up. Is it going through some weird yeah. little tiny like? 
like the for your for a hoodie, like those little things. <laughs> you, you know those put things. Your, the, the you can hood, put your thumb through the, the sleeve. Yeah, when the string I comes through the eyelet. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it has to be in there. It's in a cooter. But there's some women that just they want to impress you by clamping down. I like that though. Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. Who who's like no, effort. I like it just I like minimal, I like it minimal open. friction. <laughs> I just like it uh I like r- just it to be relaxed. Yeah. I want to work hard. Yeah, there's something ferocious about a tight pussy. Yeah. Yeah. But we're out the game, Joe. You know what yes, I mean? We just got our one perfect pussy for yeah. the rest of our life. You're recently out the game too, right? That's right. How yeah. long? Have uh, you done the thing yet? Like I, I do I do? Yeah, when we you didn't do, do the that. I do, I do thing. But that, to me, the proposal was the I do. Right. Right? Like, I don't know. I don't feel like it's any different now. For her, mm-hmm. it might be. But for me, I've made the commitment. Right. Yeah. Financially. You going to make little Andrew Schultz? Yeah, I would like to. Ooh. That would be fire. Wait, you going to stew him in New York City? Um, <clears throat> I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to see what happens to New York in like the next year. Well, it's going to light on fire. You think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to fall apart. You think? Yeah, the businesses are gone. Yeah. It's going to be a long time for that shit bounces back. It's going to it's going to be a weird place where like people that like danger go to and yeah. artists go to. It's probably going to be really good creatively for a while, but there'll be a lot of crime yeah. for a long time. It's going to take a long time for that to even out. Yeah, I wonder, man. Do you think that America would let New York go? That's yes. the crown jewel of the western world. People are in a desperate state. But I think the government would bail out New York Mm-mm. in the same way they bail out these big businesses. You think you're going to bail out Walmart before you bail out New York City? They're not going to bail out New York City. It's too complicated. Because would the, France the bail, bail out-, out Paris? That's what I'm trying to think. Like, France would bail out Paris. Like, it's not England that easy. would bail out London. Like, the idea of bailing something out is not that easy. Bro, it is. They just printed $3 trillion. You yeah, just go it, like this, print. But it's, where's the money go? Like, the, the, there's to, no money. It's fake. I understand that. It's all fake. But to get. It's all it fake. Is, Everything's fake. Basically, it's all it's, fake. It, dude, it's amazing. But to get New York City out mm-hmm. of. You would have to go back in time. You would have to do so many different things. You have all these mom and pop businesses that yeah. were open for 30 years or gone yeah. forever yeah. in a span of eight months. Mm. You would have to somehow or another stop that from happening so you keep the flavor that is these these small individual businesses in New York City. Yeah. Because that's one thing about New York City. Like New York City, even though it's very expensive and it's huge and it's massive, the thing that makes New York City cool is these independent little small mom and pop spots. Yeah. Whether it's a bodega or whether it's a restaurant or whether it's a bar, th- those that's what's cool about New York. Yeah. You got your neighborhood spots. Yeah. And those are gone. You There's think a those, lot of them You are think gone. those go because there's still people from those neighborhoods. Like Yeah, but they don't have any money. Yeah, to, but those to, people but to, aren't going to leave. Like I guess the people that I see leaving are like... The bankers, right. the uh, people who have a house in California, they also have a house in New York. The, the people that don't have to live in New York all of a sudden have left. Yes, but New a York, lot of people did. Yeah, like tons, like a million people yeah. left. But like New York has become more New York after they left. It's It hasn't felt this New York to me since I was a kid. What do you mean? Everybody I see is a New Yorker. Everybody I see is somebody who grew up there, right? So the New Yorkers, the people I went to high school with, like elementary school with, are also there because they can't afford to leave. Right. So to me, we're what makes New York dope. Like we make New York fire because we're fire. And then these people from Maine come in because they think they're cooler <laughs> than everybody in Maine. And they're like, I'm a New Yorker now. And then the second gets rough, they leave. But like, I don't know. You can't take away the essence of New York if you don't take away the New Yorkers. Well, what I was saying earlier, I think. And bodegas that it's never get... pay rent anyway. Like, come on, this is drug money. Like, that's not true. Yes. How every bodega. That's, rude. that's so rude. Oh, well, bro, what do you think that's we so get rude. weed? You go that's to the so bodega, rude. you get some stale bread and some weed. No, you have a guy deliver it to you. Now do you we know do. know those people? Now we do. Yeah. Yeah. You get the delivery, man. Yeah. Especially now that New Jersey's wide open. <laughs> we respect, <laughs> <laughs> respect Corona laws. We just don't respect the, the drug laws. No. We got our drugs delivered. We won't go outside the house. We're quarantined. You could just drive to New Jersey now. Now it's legal there. Totally legal. Yeah, but then yeah. you got to pay the toll, it's sixteen bucks ah, on the way back in. You know, hire a guy to go get it. Now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, got to know a guy. New York's People gonna. Hustle. Yeah, I think we're New gonna be York good. New York is man. going to be different. It will be different. It's not going to be what it is like eight years ago. It might be eight, better. Eight months ago. Low key, it might be better. I kind of, I don't know. Look I'm at excited you all for it. Optimistic. I gotta be. That's home team. You, don't you know have what I mean? Like, st- LA was home team for me. I built on that shit. Yeah, but you're from Boston. <laughs> That's true. Do you know what I mean? I'm so, like, if I'm Boston was place. about to go under, you'd be like, I gotta fucking help Boston out. Nope. No? Fuck off. Really? Yeah, eat shit. But it made you. Go eat it's shit, who you snow are. Dwellers. No, it made me. The Boston of 1988 made me. Ah. The, the Boston of today, I have no association with those people. Really? Other than I enjoyed their company. 
Yeah. yeah, you got Boston in you, bro. I got a little bit. You got Boston. You in start you. out doing stand up in Boston. It's it's like it's rough. It's like a boot camp. Yeah, it's a different kind of stand up. Like, My favorite comics from Boston. They don't have any attention span up there. No. They're like, let's go. Yeah. I worked all day. You yeah. fuck. <laughs> and they heckle funny. Oh yeah. That's the thing people do not understand. You yeah. go do comedy in Boston, someone's going to heckle you with a line that you're like, I'm going to keep that line. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to say that I'm going to keep it, but next time I'm on stage, I'll be using that line. <laughs> I'll tell you, good. A lot of funny people in Boston yeah. never become comics. It's cold. It's cold weather and people work hard. Yeah. And they need to do something to amuse themselves. They talk shit to each other. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of shit talking there. Yeah. I just think that the problem at New York is particularly like restaurants and clubs and stuff like that. Like yeah. those things are not coming back. And clubs those could things go. that have been around for a long time. I'm cool with that. Wait, like comedy clubs? No, like nightclubs. Nightclubs, yeah. Yeah. Nightclubs. Comedy clubs should be back. And we should uh I mean we should be doing more to help the comedy clubs, honestly, man. They should let them open. They should, they should let should them do. fucking open. They should open. let people do whatever the fuck they want to do, and that's what they do right here. That's why mm. I moved here. They let people do whatever the fuck they want to do. Yeah. You, you can go to restaurants. You can go to clubs. Yeah. Chappelle and I are doing these shows. There's 400 Amazing. people outside stuffed into this amphitheater. I love and it. And they're all COVID tested. And I they're like, it. good. Sounds good. Let's do a show. You can't even do that in LA. They won't even allow you. you yeah, LA is shut down dining. completely, right? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. There's no science behind it. It's yeah. ridiculous. What do you think it is? They're monsters. They're but like, what do they get out of it? I'm trying to understand. Is it like re-election just by quote unquote no, saving lives? There's a lot like, of cases. There's a lot of cases. There are a lot of cases. Okay. But their solution to a lot of cases, they've had eight months to add new hospital rooms. That's what I'm wondering. Eight, eight months. Eight Didn't months to the fix same, the system. Like the same people that were telling us there's going to be a second wave yeah. weren't preparing for the second no, wave. They've had eight months. Eight months to do all this. Yeah. They haven't done shit. They just tell you what you can't do. Yeah. They don't tell you anything what you should be doing for your health. Mm. Anything that you should be doing to boost your immune system. Yeah. They don't uh, pass out vitamin D to people. I was trying to get that Regeneron from you. We when I, when I got somewhere. Corona, nah, when I got Corona, I hit you up. I was like, Joe, I you, hit you and Jamie. Late, though. You, what do you, you mean? You, you, you want to get it right at the point of infection. Like right when you know you have it, that's when you're supposed to get on that Right, stuff. right. Yeah. You yeah. were you were like five days in. I think I was a few man. days in, and I was like freaking out because it was literally right in the middle of the Netflix shoot. We mm -hmm. had to shut it down, and um, and I remember going, "I need to beat this within ten days so that we don't miss our launch date." Right. Because I got to come back and film, and I was like, "Who the fuck know? Do I know that has some Regeneron?" And then I remember I texted you and I was like, Joe, and I texted you like real like easy at first. I was like, Joe, what should I do for Corona? You know what I mean? And then you were like, you know, take some vitamin D, this, that, there. I was like, yeah, that's cool. But what's up with that Regeneron? And then you're, the next thing you text me, you're like, I can get my hands on that if you need it. The, 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 the issue was the doctor told me it was too late. Really? Yeah, the doctor I got a hold of said he's better. Oh, so funny, he asked though. me your symptoms, asked me where you're at. He goes, literally, he's yeah. better off just doing nothing right now. Yeah. It was all right. You know, it was like a, having you a little cold You still can't smell, shit. though. I can't smell. I was telling you earlier, I can't smell. And I lost at taste all. for a little bit. Um, no, I can't smell at all. I realized I couldn't smell. About, yeah. How about Donnell Rollins' black ash Ooh, candle? Let me smell that. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. It smells like Hennessy buffalo wings. Do you get anything out of that? No. Uh, Nothing? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah, it just kind of smells like soap to me. Like and Donnell, I'm sure it's way better than what I'm smelling. Is yeah. that really strong to you? A little. It yeah. Smells, it smells good. I like the smell. Yeah. I, I, don't, like I don't smell in, anything. In honor of Donnell. Yeah. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> You're not worried about getting it at all, huh? No. I'm worried about giving it to other people. Yeah, that's, got it, yeah, that was that's the, what I would worry about. Yeah. I'm so juiced up on vitamins and all kinds of other Mexican supplements and <laughs> yeah. various various things that accentuate the way your body works. Do you think you're just going to turn off one day? Me? Yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just going to read one day on a Thursday? You like picked up a kettlebell and just fell freight over? I'm uh, As long as it's moving, everything works great. As long as it keeps working great. But you don't mind being like an experiment for these things? No. No. You well, like I it. talk to doctors. Yeah. Like I'm not doing this like haphazardly. Yeah. All these doctors that I talk to have already been experimenting on people it's for a little, decades. It's a little haphazardly. Well, it's I yeah. get blood it's a tests bit. and I it's like I know what I'm doing. You were pitching us something earlier. It didn't even have a name, Joe. <laughs> 
Which, what you know, like which one the, the PBC oh, piping? BPC 157. I don't know what this thing yeah, is. Yeah, it's a peptide. Yeah, it, it's, of course. It heals. It's a peptide. Yeah, it, it heals people I know with what, injuries. A peptide? What is a peptide? Joe, 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 look at me. I went to public school. I don't know what a peptide is. <laughs> what the fuck I went is? to public school too. <laughs> How the fuck do you know what a peptide is? I read. Okay, I got to get into that. Yeah, you get into reading. Peptide. But this, my, my doctor actually told me about peptides a long time ago. Yeah, they uh -huh. accentuate healing. Okay. There's a lot of articles about them. Like okay. Athletes swear by them. Yes. Particularly BPC. 157 okay there's uh, a lot of evidence that it accelerates healing from injuries mm -hmm. and a lot of like elite athletes swear by it i, I just believe started sada has banned them i don't think see if that's true because i think chad mendez was using was, uh, it was using a peptide and he got he got in trouble i think that was one of the things he got in trouble with i don't think he knew they were banned i'm about it i was telling you earlier like i'm down to start like cycling or something like that or yeah. hgh or whatever i heard if you do a little bit of the hgh it's kind of fine yes that's exactly what you want you and, want like one unit that's what i take i take like one unit a day and doesn't change the way you look or anything like that well you get big if you get bigger okay. it's gonna change the way you look like your face will fill out your neck will be bigger yeah you know your shoulders will be bigger you're gonna get bigger if you lift weights but if you don't lift weights and yeah. you take that stuff and you keep your body fairly lean, yeah. you'll, you'll, you know. What if I do half a unit and lift weights? You, what you should do, what's the matter? I need to find Damn, the balance. Laughing at him. I'm just trying to find the balance where I don't like yeah. change the shape of my body and head. Because like 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 what you just said to me was so normal. <clears throat> like what you said it was really normal. You were like, yeah, like your head will grow. Well, that's not that normal. Your face will fill out and yeah, it'll that's look the same like thing. your head's growing. That's the same but if you get to the actual Joe, skull Joe, itself, Joe, it's basically the same Joe, size. Joe. Uh, Chad Mendes did have a peptide, but it was uh, something called GHRP6. Okay, so it's another peptide. Yeah. There's thymoisin, there's a few different peptides, but all of them uh, athletes like to use because it accelerates healing. Do you do anything, any sports or anything? You didn't, I didn't play basketball. I was playing bit. ball, and then I kind of stopped playing ball. And then. Um, I uh I box kickbox a little bit. That's oh, what yeah? I do for like uh, exercise. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You doing that right now? Is there, are they open in New York? I kind of I like broke my hand uh, a few months ago. So How'd you like do that? my brother and I got into a little thing. Were you and your brother? Huh? Yeah. You this, hit him on the forehead. Uh, uh actually the cheekbone. You had a. a uh, an actual Donnie Brook with your brother. Yeah, a little bit. And it's fucked up is because like I, you know, usually you break these knuckles. Yeah. But uh I broke this one. He's huge. My brother's like 6'6", six, six, so like I think I was punching up and I just hit that part of my finger first. But he's massive. Like he could ju just fucking destroy me if he wanted to. Why'd you hit him then? Uh he just hit me. He hit you first? Yeah. Wow. He's got some, you know, he's like uh he's got some stuff going on so. Some issues? Yeah, he's a little He's a little schizophrenic, so like... Oh, no. I just walked in for my dad's a birthday. giant schizophrenic. Yeah. Ooh, fun times. Oh, yeah. That's great. Mm. But he's great. He's, he's you know, he's <clears> the best. <throat> and he can hit hard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. But, yeah, I love the... Uh, I used to box back in the day, you know, when I was in college and shit, so... Yeah? That was fun. That's a great way to exercise. Oh, that's the best. It's As you get fun. older, the most important thing, though, is weightlifting. Really? Yeah, because your bones, your bones start getting, lo the, you lose density. They, they just get weaker. As really? You get older. And the only way to change your bones, uh -huh. the only way to become uh -huh. thicker and denser is weightlifting. The only way. Really? Yeah. Why is it different than, than boxing? Because you're not carrying weight. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is you're fighting gravity. Like, like when you do, like say if you're doing like cleans and presses and shit like that, yeah. Olympic weightlifts is what I always recommend to people, particularly deadlifts. Mm. Deadlifts is the, that's the, the big one. Yeah. Deadlifts and squats because you're, you're forcing your body to pick up heavy things yeah. and your body just gets denser. Everything gets thicker and denser because your bone structure is recognizing, your body's recognizing that this fucking dude likes to carry heavy shit now. Yeah. This is our new life. Yeah. Our new life is we have to adapt to him carrying heavy shit. Right. So your bones get denser. As you get older, when you don't exercise, your bones absolutely get like lighter and frailer and weaker and more fragile that's why when people old people fall down they break hips and shit mm. yeah they just they lose all their bone density the yeah. only way to maintain bone density is weightlifting so that's why you're all about the kettlebells all and about concept. it all about weights yeah yeah, yeah. but it's, you're still doing kickboxing yeah huh? i do everything yeah but but I never stop lifting weights. It's as you get, I'm 53, right? As you get older, there's just no way around the deterioration unless you, you, you have to be disciplined. Do you think you could still throw down? <laughs> like if it had to happen, like if Jake Paul called you out, could well, you he'd probably fuck me up? Really? He's a really good boxer. He's a good boxer. What yeah. if it was kickboxing 
he doesn't when really I know how a, to kickbox. When I was a younger man and I had good knees, I could be kickboxing people. But yeah. I, I could barely get through a workout without being in pain now. There's a reality of knees and backs. And shit. <laughs> have you tried the PBC uh, to peptide? The BPC. Uh, that too is also a really yeah, good have. one. Yeah, yeah. It, it helps you maintain. But there's a big yeah. difference between maintaining and working out and then getting being able to train for a fight yeah so you think interesting. Like being able to train yeah. for a fight your body would break down yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah jake is interesting man he is Dude, excellent at so is his brother yeah his brothers there's a we played a video of his brother wrestling uh paulo costa yeah yeah his brother is fucking legit i think he's they, a legit athlete yeah i think he wrestled back in the day yeah though. yeah he did yeah wrestling college jamie tried to shut it down say it was like junior college uh, but it was actually real college uh, <laughs> that's that ohio rivalry right there <laughs> that's what that is no, those guys, listen, man, you got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. I know those guys like to troll, but he's, Jake and his brother are both legitimate tough guys. They're do you, tough. Do you think that you need trolling now for fight sports? Are we at a point where, like, that's the only thing that engages the casual fan? <laughs> well, Khabib Nurmagomedov is the biggest draw in combat sports, and yep. he doesn't do any trash talk. But is that a reflection of dominance? It's like, yeah, are, are we kind of just... watching to see if he'll lose, like the Mayweather effect? Well, like how many people are yeah. rooting for like Khabib seems like incredibly like sweet guy and he's like a consummate pro professional. But I feel like the way you market the fight is not in the way that when we were younger watching Roy Jones, we're like, yo, Roy's going to do some crazy thing where he like puts his hand behind his back and he just knocks a dude out. Like we were rooting for Roy to win right. even in his most dominant time. I feel like now the way you promote the fight is, oh, this is the perfect guy to take out Khabib. Mm -hmm. You know, like Justin's the perfect. Oh, yeah, you know, he's got striking, but he has a wrestling background. We're kind of like thinking of different ways we take him down. Whereas, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, like, I don't know if we're if we're if we're rooting for him to win in that way. Um, well, if you're a fan of his, you're rooting for him to win. Sure, and I'm sure if you're from you're Dagestan saying. and that kind of when stuff. When you have a guy who's uh, Khabib's tw uh, 28 or 29 and 0, and really has smashed everybody in front of him, yeah, you always wonder like who's going to be the guy that solves that riddle. Yeah, and Justin came real close with those leg kicks. Like, yeah, he was he was really fucking up his leg. Yeah, and but Khabib figured out a way to get the fight to the ground, almost finished it at the beginning or the end rather of the first round, and then got him in the second round. Yeah, he's just. He's on another level. Yeah. And that's one of the things that happens when you're, I mean, you got to realize that guy is supremely disciplined. Yeah. Supremely dedicated. Like doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't fuck around, doesn't abuse his body, always fit, always in shape, always training and lives like a champion. Mm. And is like very religious, like very devout Muslim, like doesn't, I think that doesn't helps. fuck. Oh yeah. He's it's so dis disciplined. No yeah. partying. He's not partying. He's not doing coke and banging hoes. There's none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just smashing people. Yeah. You know? But I think he's... They're trying to talk him into having more fights. But right. he told his mother that he was going to retire after he fought Gaethje. Yeah, I remember seeing that. But you know what, man? He's in his prime. And you only get one prime. Yeah. And, you know, and as... What more can he the prove, The most though? dominant man in the sport. Yeah. <clears throat> What's going on here? That weight cut he had there. It was uh, going around again from his... Oh, uh, wow. I think his last fight. Oh, he always cuts a lot of weight, man. But it was they're apparently very brutal. Or... Yeah, it's brutal. But what yeah, more can he bro. prove? He's not really 155 pounds. Like yeah. these, the, the, there's a thing in in mixed martial arts that we all just accept, and it's it's a sanctioned form of cheating. Like you're pretending you're 155 pounds, so you j draw your body out, you dry out to 155, and then yeah. you fucking balloon back up. Eat a lot of spaghetti and balloon yeah. back up to 200 pounds after the weight cut. Yeah. it's nuts. How do you work around that? The only way you do it is you have hydration tests. They've implemented that in college sports, in uh, wrestling. What's a hydration test? They test your body. They test your hydration. Mm. They make sure that you're not dehydrated. So, whatever. Ah, so you have to have a certain amount of mm -hmm. liquid in your body when you're weighing in. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They're doing that in this organization called 1FC. 1FC is an organization that's in uh, Asia. Uh, they're, yeah. they're huge, huge a That's lot what of Askren uh, was. He was <clears throat> yep, doing most of his damage. Over. Askren was yeah. over there. Um, uh, Mighty Mouse Johnson went over there. Mm. Eddie Alvarez went over there. Uh, a lot of really good fighters that the UFC either lost a bidding and they went over there, or they yeah. decided to leave the UFC and go over there. Yeah, but they're doing hydration tests. Mm. So guys that fought at 170 are now fighting at 185 mm. because that's really what they weigh. Yeah, a guy who fights at 170 generally. Like a guy, like a savage, like Kamaru Usman, he walks around like 190-ish, yeah, maybe crazy. even bigger, and then just dehydrates himself down to 170 for a very small amount of time, and then balloons back up 
Like you see them at the weigh-ins yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you see them the next day at the fight. It's hard to believe it's the same person yeah. sometimes. Yeah, but then there's certain guys that are fighting around their weight and they're mm -hmm. exceptional. Like Izzy yep. fights probably within like five pounds of what he walks around. Izzy in. fights, uh, he, he weighs in below the limit yeah. all the time. Yeah. But Izzy is in the matrix. He's yeah. on he's so much better as a striker yeah. than most of these guys he faces. And every fight starts out standing up. Yeah. Like you gotta get a hold of that guy if you does, wanna win. Does it feel like <clears throat> now when I watch his fights and I'm seeing how like dominant he's become, do you think that's a reflection of him just becoming more confident in the ring? Because I don't know if his striking skills are being improved. He's been an elite striker probably for the last decade. Mm -hmm. But something is different in terms of like... Well, he's a champion. You know, is that it? There's yeah, just there's, the championship bump? Well, he's also getting better. I mean, he's young. He's still improving. Yeah. Like, these guys, they still train. When you're training, you're getting better. It's not like you train yeah, and you yeah. hit this plateau and you never get any better. Now, the yeah. best fighters keep getting better yeah. until the wheels fall off, until their body starts breaking down. Yeah. You know, and his body's not breaking down at all. He's, yeah. Uh, he's in his prime right now. Yeah. And, you know, he's just he's just better. He's just better than everybody. He's also, he's smart Yeah, as he's fuck, smart man. in there, dude. There's a lot going on. Like, he sees patterns that other guys don't necessarily see. Mm. And his emphasis on precision over power, like all these guys that are really really interested in power, yeah. that's one of the things that the Paulo Costa fight was so so interesting yeah. about that fight was like, Paulo Costa is just this giant gorilla. Yeah. Just smash him up, dude. Just big, yoked as fuck. Just, yeah. Just walks dudes down and beats the fuck out of them. Yeah. And uh, and Izzy was laughing about that. He's yeah. like, I, I don't. Everybody has power. He goes, I have precision. Yeah. And then you saw it in the fight. You're like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, he really does. Like yeah. this isn't just boasting. Yeah. Like when he started lighting up his leg and do yeah. all his feints and and switch stances on him. Yeah. And, and get reads on him and then pop at him. He started picking that dude apart. It was that leg kick, man. Yeah. Well, it was that. It was. So I think Costa had something going on with his legs before the fight, legitimately, because mm. he had all those cup marks all over his legs. Uh. A lot of times these dudes in training are training with guys, and they're training the same way they're fighting. And so they're... You're they're, training with a guy who's going to attack your leg. Yeah, and not only yeah. that, he's, you know, he's a, a big brute. And so he's probably fucking up his training partners. Right. His training partner's probably fucking up him. Right. And... They're attacking the calves. Yep. Because the calf kick is a very debilitating weapon. Yeah. And a lot of these athletes are using this now. Yeah. And when I saw him walk into the octagon, you see his, if you could see his calves. Yeah. Before, like that right now is just fucked up from Izzy Amazing, chewing yeah. it up. But even before the fight started, hmm. he had these cup marks all over his calves. I see the guys with them on their back sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It uh, It helps people with like injuries and aches and pains and shit like that but if you have those on your calves i wonder there's an like, issue i start thinking oh you might be bruised up already somebody might have already chopped at your calves yeah the, you've ever been kicked in the calf no nah. it's a fucking terrible feeling yeah, yeah it's terrible yeah. your feet go numb actually no i have i would uh like do like fake sparring it's not not real it's more like working out drills and stuff like that with this guy when we were working out and um i didn't have a, a shin guard and mm. he did and it's still was like brutal oh yeah because i was supposed to check him but mm -hmm. eventually it just hurt so much just checking him so i just kind of like would turn my leg i like let him move my leg with it yeah it was probably the worst technique no it's not the worst some guys choose to do that yeah. over over checking it sometimes when you know you just can't get out of the way and you know the kick's coming your way yeah sometimes you have to make a, a decision in the moment yeah like is uh, is my shin so battered from yeah. checking that yeah. this is going to kill me if he yeah. hits it? And maybe the side of my leg is a little bit more durable. I'll like, yeah. let it go. Yeah. It's like and in boxing, like turning me. with the punch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's all I got left. Exactly. I'm going to turn yeah. my jaw as you punch it. Yeah. yeah. Well, some guys are masters at that shit. Yeah. They stand right in front of dudes and let them throw punches. Yeah. Canelo has really improved. God it's damn, so funny improved. to see him, like, because I was at the fight where Canelo fought Mayweather. And like you do remember mm -hmm. that fight? Yeah. And just Mayweather just totally schooled him, man. Yep. It was it was unbelievable. It, truly unbelievable yeah. to even just be there in that room and just watch. There was so much confidence behind Canelo, right? And obviously like eighty percent of the crowd was Mexican, right? And you saw like eighty percent of the crowd's hearts just broken. Because yeah. by the third round, you know exactly what was going on. Yep. And it was just this complete domination. And yeah, man, it was unbelievable to see. Mayweather's a real master. He's I, a modern master. To me, he's the greatest great of all time. Meaning he's well, greater at boxing than like Stephen Hawking is at science, in my opinion. 
there's a good argument for that because who's come close? Here's the thing: like the the sport is hit and not be hit. Who does that better than Floyd Mayweather? Dude, I can name three times in his career where he was hurt. I can name yeah. them. Yeah, Zab Judah, Shane right Mosley. hook, Shane Mosley, Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. Demarcus Chop Chop Corley almost like put him out, mm, and it was the I same. Forgot about that fight. How and, about Maidana? Maidana, yeah, Maidana hit him at the end round. of a yeah at the end of the belly hit him in the right hand and Floyd didn't know where his corner was yeah. for a second he was out of it but he's got a beard that's the thing about Floyd a lot of people yeah. don't realize that he's got the pretty boy shit but he could take a shot yeah and I remember just like I'm like damn this guy is impossible to beat what do you think is gonna happen when he fights Logan Paul how crazy is that I, dude that I love uh, dude I like Logan Logan's I, a big kid but he's it, big it, it doesn't matter it's like Canelo was big. They've no, all been but, big. But you know, with Canelo, the, the Floyd, one of the things he did that was really intelligent, he forced Canelo to go down to, I believe it was 150 154. pounds. Oh, did they have a catch weight? Yeah. I yeah, think it was 152. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, yeah. I think he did that because he knew Canelo had a hard time making 154. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and now Canelo's at 168. Well, he fought 75. He knocked out Kovalev. I thought that was at 168. No, that was the light, that was heavyweight, the light heavyweight title. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knocked out Kovalev. Yeah, yeah, great left hook. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, God. yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, look at this. I mean, that's obviously not real, but still, Logan's got the size. He's a big guy. It's not real, but it it might be close. <laughs> and Floyd is tiny, but at the same time, it's like Logan's not going to hit Floyd with any shot that he hasn't been hit with before. The only way he could is if you got a bad referee and the referee lets them tie up. So if the referee lets him lets Logan tie him up, yep. and Logan can hit Floyd in the clinch right. and hurt him. I don't think that's... Can he generate that much power in oh, the yeah. clinch? He's, he you can... think Logan oh, can? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <sighs> a guy who's strong, who can hit hard, can fuck you up from a clinch. It happens yeah. all the time. Yeah, but Dude, I don't DC know. DC knocked out Stipe from the clinch. Yeah. Yeah. That was that short right hand. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, I just I don't see anybody doing that to Floyd, man. Like if you watch no, Floyd sparring stuff, can't. do you like yeah. you ever watch his like yeah. the Mayweather gym stuff? Amazing. Fifteen minute rounds. Fifteen and shit. minute rounds. Yeah. And in the gym, he is not on his bicycle. In the gym, he is in front of you yeah. talking shit as you miss every single shot you throw at him. Yeah. And it's like there's no way that Logan connects. What I think could happen is that the fight is boring because maybe Floyd can't inflict enough like one punch damage mm -hmm. on Logan. So maybe it's boring and then maybe he wins in like the people's eyes because it's like you actually went 10 rounds with Floyd Mayweather. This, I that, think the other. if Floyd hurts him, what, what Floyd does is wears him out and it makes him fight stiff and uncomfortable yeah. because he's Body not shots. he's not going to be nearly as efficient. Yeah. Logan is going to be much less efficient. He's going to be trying really hard, mm -hmm. and he's never done. I don't know how many rounds they're doing. How many rounds are they doing? I don't know, eight, maybe, or something like that. I don't even know if they've announced enough. But if, still, if I, if I was Floyd, I'd want it to be twelve. Yeah, like, the longer the drag that guy into yeah. deep water and then beat the fuck out of him. Yeah. because Floyd can do twelve rounds in his sleep. You mm. can wake him up in, in the middle of the night. Yeah. So like, if they were the same size, it wouldn't even be interesting. Yeah. And even th though Logan's way bigger than him, it's still. Only mildly interesting, yeah. Because you literally have the greatest boxer of all time, yeah. Versus a kid who's like really athletic and yeah. really tough, who, yeah. can, who can fight, yeah. But it's you know, he's he's not in that league. Yeah. It's not no. There's no no discussion. It's not a person on earth that thinks he's in the same league boxing. Yeah. But Floyd is, he's a true master. Master. A master. Yeah. The greatest ever, in my opinion. Yes, I would I would say he's in the running. Like you. Sugar Ray Robinson was. We just don't know. A hundred and something and O. Oh but you, you and I weren't alive loss. for this. Like, no. the, like that's my dad's favorite boxer, and like my dad's a huge boxing fan. He used to like cover boxing for the news. He would go to Ali's camp. Like he has footage of like himself like shadow boxing with Ali. What? Yeah, it's unbelievable. And like, if anybody's was your dad a boxer, mob? No, no, no. He was. He worked for NBC. Really? Yeah, he was like a newscaster. Yeah, wow. yeah. And like he just, uh, yeah, he did his wild story. He's like Forrest Gump. He like did like the first ever story on like hip hop music. Like it was c kind of crazy stuff. But like he uh, he has a video like shadow boxing with Muhammad Ali, and then Muhammad Ali stops and goes, uh, "What do you box? Oranges?" <laughs> 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 so, like he's the biggest Ali fan in the world, and he saw you know Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh. I guess when he was a kid, and he was like Sugar Ray Robinson. 
outside of like him and Ali, those are the best I've ever seen. But mm. that's like a generational thing, obviously. Most boxers like to point to Sugar Ray Robinson as the greatest of all time. Yeah. Guys who are in the know of boxing. He was a master. Yeah. He, he was also, but he was a different kind of master. He would slugged it out with people. He, he would get in there if he had to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he fought rough and tumble. Yeah. But- Here's my argument against that. Right. He lost to Jake LaMotta in a decision. I can't imagine a world where Floyd Mayweather loses to Jake LaMotta. If they're the same size, I can't imagine a world where Floyd doesn't outbox him. Because Floyd has this, he has a, has a more intelligent approach. And his, his approach is to frustrate the fuck out of you and, and take angles on you and pop you and then, yeah. and then not let you hit him back. And then you get into fifth, sixth, seventh round. You start going, oh my God, this is how this fight is going. Mm-hmm. I have to get desperate mm-hmm. like i can't even hit this guy i, I and, dare you to get desperate. and then you start yeah. getting down the line yeah and then he catches you like you caught ricky hatton that's beautiful yeah that he, check hook yep yeah i mean he, he's just like watching him just as like a boxing fan like watching him take away people's confidence mm-hmm. like i watched him take shane mosley's confidence from him mm-hmm. like shane it did end up catching him with that 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 right hand One right hand yeah and uh but what happened was when shane i think threw his like first or second jab Floyd had already timed him. He threw the first jab, and then Floyd came right over the top. He has that like amazing kind of like slip, and he comes right over the top mm-hmm. of the right hand, and he stunned Shane. And then right after that, Shane was like, I can't even jab. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. This guy is on a different level. And then he ended up catching him with that right, but still, like, yeah, he's just, he's just a great... I don't know what happened. I mean, I want Logan to get the money. Like, I want these guys to get the bag. And, like, there's something about, like, calling somebody out, which you immediately respect them a little bit more, like, willing to put yourself out there for a fight. He called out Conor McGregor, too. Jake that's Jake. Jake, that's what Jake's doing. Yeah. That kid is a master troll, dude. He's a master <laughs> creating hype. Like, dude, if I'm Dana White, I'm praying that this guy can what actually... Is this? A Jake Paul-Amanda Nunes boxing match? That's because Dana said, uh, Dana said I'm, I'm, maybe I'll let Amanda Nunes knock him out. Um, I that's hope, just not good for anybody. I hope they don't do that. That's just not good for anybody. Yeah, I but the question is, could you can't sleep on that kid. That yeah. kid can fucking crack. Yeah. When you look at how he knocked Nate Robinson out, that short hand that he threw was very skillful. Real punch. That was a real, real punch. Real punch. And it was perfectly placed. And he, he can hit hard. All three punches were the same thing. Mm-hmm. They're a step back overhand right. Yeah. You... That's that's not like got lucky. That's hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, so he's gonna charge at you. Just step back and lay a right hand on him. Yeah, I mean, th- he knew skillful. exactly it was. It was skillful, and I- that was in the middle of a wild brawl where Nate Robinson was trying to take his head off, with, mm-hmm. and it was kind of unorthodox, right? So it's it's dangerous because yeah. Nate is super strong. He's a crazy athlete, yeah. unreal he's athlete, winging punches yeah. at him, and so he's got to figure his way through this this maze of, yeah. of bombs headed his way, and he clips him. Mm. You know, here it is. I like, think yeah. if you look at him, look, you at, look, look at him move. Look at how how well he moves away. Yeah, this is the beginning he of it. He ties right? up well. Boom. But he's he's good just at tying up and using defense. Mm-hmm. And Nate was fucking dangerous, man. Yep, and he's he tried, fucking you, you saw him try to throw the right right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a skillful boxer, man. Yeah. He really is. Like legitimately Oof, skillful. There it is. I mean, he's not world class right now, but he is 23 years old. Yeah. I mean, there he got is. a real night, night. bam. That, that's one that folded him, but that's yeah. not the one that folded him ultimately. He got up off of that one, and he get KO'd by the next one. Yeah. They should have stopped it right there. Well, he was complaining to the referee that he got hit behind the head, which is no. hilarious. That's that was so ridiculous. That lights out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that— I think you realize yeah. at this point in time that this is not— it's not just athleticism involved here. That's what There's people don't get. There's a mental game in boxing that you have to, you have to understand what a fight is. It's—, mm-hmm. it's you're you're at war with yourself as much as you're at war with that other person. You have to keep keep back it up, Jamie. Well, let's see that punch. Yeah. So let this play out. So if you watch how he knocks this dude out, like yeah, even the way he's is. moving his body, game over. I don't think that's it. No, that's the second one. That's yeah. That's just a knockdown. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Bang. That's the one. Great I mean, shot. When you see a guy face plant like that and bounce, yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, to play it back, just just let it play. But if you watch how he did it, look at this, Boom. dude. Feet, that is that's a short punch, man. Yep. He didn't wind that up. He stepped back and put it in place. Mm. 
He's got skill. Yeah. And he's only 23. If he decides to dedicate himself to yeah. actually being a boxer yeah. and spends all of his time boxing and then talking shit and doing podcasts, yeah. you fucking never know, man. Yeah. He he might go a long way. He obviously can perform under pressure. He obviously has legitimate power. Yeah. He's got legitimate skill. Yeah. And he's dedicated. Why not do it if you're Connor? 50 um, million to beat up the guy that talks some shit about your wife? First of all, that it was wild what he said about again, his wife. I didn't see what he said about his wife. Uh, he said, he, you didn't see this video? No. Oh my God, bro. I don't need to see that. We don't need to broadcast that. Okay, fine. But he, Everybody's seen it, by the way. He just called his yeah. He just called his wife a four. Wow. Yeah, How and rude. it's he only follows one girl on Instagram, mm -hmm. Connor's wife. Oh my god. Yeah, he knows no, how to play the trolling even. game. Yeah, it's a one That's person. Hilarious. That so it's hilarious. like. It's a he's a wild boy, but he understands what he's doing. Yeah. Just the other day, well, that's what Connor does. That, I mean, talk about talking that's about people's wives. Connor did that to Jose Aldo. Did that we talk shit, be, bro? Yeah, yeah, to you everybody. Know, yeah. yeah, but like, it was it was just wild, man. And then recently, yeah, I mean, like the guy knows what he's doing. He was in uh, L.A. and I think I think it was at Brendan Schaub's show, like this Dylan Danis. Mm -hmm. You know, he was yeah. like doing the food truck thing. Yeah. And he, I guess, he has some beef with Jake Paul. Jake wants to fight him, so yeah. he pulls up on the back of a pickup truck with water balloons and wet toilet paper and starts chucking it at him while he's doing the interview. This is it. How the did guy he know knows that he was how to be, be there. I don't know, somebody's talking. How did he know he was going to be somebody's there? Somebody's talking. His brother did it. A couple and, days but before, then he, maybe he they just sped away to him and told him where it was or something. But Dylan Dennis ran up to him and he sped away. Why didn't right. he get out and fight him? Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. That it's, it's kind of soft. Like he came at you and well, all your people. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah. Dylan Dennis gets a hold of you. You're it's getting a your arms broken. Yeah. You're getting your neck strangled off. Yeah. As your a bad motherfucker. You're gonna get like a zit. You're gonna, <laughs> he's gonna rip your knees apart. There's he's that good. Not huh? a fucking chance in the world. Yeah. Really. Oh, if, if Dil Dylan Dennis is a world class grappler, really? top of the food chain. Yeah. He's like, I mean, he he's a guy who who, I'm pretty sure he went to a draw with Gordon Ryan. Who is the oh, elite of the elite? I see yeah. him in the uh, I mean, maybe, in those videos maybe on YouTube. Gordon a lot. beat him by decision by like one point know. or something like that. The right. of what's going on in this. Uh, was this picture? that fifty million? No, he just posted this. Proof so of live. funds got you curious, huh? Notorious MMA. So he's showing take the fight pussy. Who said take the fight? So pussy? Jake Paul says to Connor, take the fight pussy in a DM, and then he showed that Con Connor saw the DM. Uh, he's just this kid like okay so there's different ways to like build hype obviously like you can build hype by just creating you know uh, great content you can build hype by creating drama and you can build hype by creating like a, a villain-esque attitude right yes and this guy has no problem being the villain he if he likes to talk shit about dylan dennis i think it would be hilarious if they had uh, an mma match well I don't think he wants to do the MMA one, but he's trying to get Dylan to do the boxing one. I know, but that's why he ran away from Dylan. Because if it's there's a wrap no boxing with Dylan. gloves, yeah. if Dylan grabs you, done. That's a, it's a whole different world, son. But could he beat him in a box? I don't know enough no. about Dylan, but could he no. beat him in a boxing match? He might be able to. But if you're but Dylan. that's not his world. I mean, so he's Nate not Diaz an elite got involved. Boxer. Oh God! I Big would Paul, love you to need see to get Nate fight free. You spoil fuck. You can't really fight dumb shit. You're gonna end up with your ass whooped for real somewhere talking like that. <laughs> Tell me you don't want to see this fight, dude. It feels like the '90s with rap beef. It's West Coast, East Coast. Oh like they're God, really doing it. Hilarious. Well, but tell me you don't want to see Nate well, and him guys, fight. Like, well, I do. These guys are trying to make money. Let you know? them make some money. That's, I'm just like. That's how you make money. More. What is this? You, you said saw you saw what it happened to, to the, the other, other Nate. Nate. Uh, <laughs> so the kid knows what he's doing. He knows how to build hype. And oh, yeah. He doesn't mind, I guess, being hated. No, he doesn't mind. Which being is hated. a value asset. Valuable he's having asset. fun. Look, and he's very respectful after the fight's over. Like with yeah. Nate Robinson, he was very respectful. Yeah. He, he was. I think it is. He is playing the, the character. I mean, we've seen, you know, Connor do it. We've seen Floyd do it. We've seen guys like really lean into it, too hyped to fight. Who knows what happens after the fight, but you got to still keep on playing the character. And you can't deny that the motherfuckers that understand how to troll or yeah. garner interest are the guys who are going to make the most money. 100%. Like, you see the guy, I keep on telling Izzy, I'm like, bro, I mean, Darren Till's got to get some wins, but like a fight between you and Darren, the lead up on social media is going to be the most fun. Yeah. Nonstop back and forth. They're making well, memes Izzy's of each other. Well, moved up to light heavyweight. You know, he's fighting Jan Blahovic. Sure, sure, sure. So but like... Izzy's fighting right for the title. Right, right, right. But still, the idea of having those two guys who really understand... Because mm -hmm. remember when I said he was going to fight Yol, and I was like, stop fighting guys that don't speak English. We can't do anymore. Ah. It's like, it could be a fun fight, but like, which that one was not, but like, I want the hype. I want you to make as much money as possible. You know what I mean? I want people, the casual fan, to be interested. How do you get the casual... 
He just is. He just needs to keep going. He's, he's it's inevitable. He's got it's like inevitable. he's mapped out this whole thing. It's yeah. like even when you talk about him, these there's a things. guy that's in uh, MMA now. There's the last guy to knock him out. His name's Alex Pereira, and he's yeah. truly one of the most terrifying human beings. Alive. Bad motherfucker. Oh, dude, yeah. go look up Alex Pereira's KO from his last fight. Right, dude, he hits people, and it, it doesn't even make sense. Really? It's like. It, it doesn't. He's the same size as these people. Yeah. But he hits them. It's like he's a heavyweight and they're a lightweight. I'm telling yeah. you, he's got fucking freaky power. Like like Pacquiao had back in the day. Remember? Yeah. It's it's different, right? Because he's got four ounce gloves, and <laughs> yeah, you know with those yeah, four yeah. ounce gloves, and you might, hit his just, yeah, just yeah. watch. Pull up his last KO, bro. This is he he owns two weight classes in glory. Give me some volume. Ooh-y. But give me some volume so I can hear this because it's. It, the the sound. It's a nice hook. Horrific. Oh, dude, he's a mo- he's he's a middleweight and light heavyweight champion. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 no, no. Oh, let me give me some volume. I've seen this. I've seen this. Shit. Let me hear that shit. Just listen to this. Oh, yep. Over. Yeah, yeah. That's night night, bro. Yo, but in the fight the where he knocks out Izzy, Izzy was fucking his dude up, and they yeah. should have stopped the fight. They, Izzy was fucking that guy up to the point where he's just in the corner covering up. I'm shocked they didn't stop the fight. Maybe well, in kickboxing they let you get away with a little bit more. It was but, in Brazil too. But there you go. Yeah, I mean, so, there's a good argument that you know you could have maybe stopped the fight, but if he goes on to knock Izzy out, maybe the argument is that you got to let guys fight. Let, let uh, hey, listen. The end of the result of the fight is the end of the result yeah. of the fight. I'm just saying, like, I think if that happens again, I think it's I think yes, Izzy easy. Who knows? Maybe they've both gotten well, better, but from I what I saw of the fight, he's, listen, he's definitely gotten better. Pereira's yeah. gotten better, but if you go back to Pereira's early days when he was fighting in Last Man Standing, mm. he lost a decision to someone in Last Man Standing, and you know that was a, a big glory event back in the day, and he just came into his own like fighters do. They come into their own, and then they reach this point where they're they're a champion now. Yeah, and there's just a different thing. Izzy's clearly in that place now. Yeah. He's on another level. But I think Pereira is too. Yeah. And if Pereira has takedown defense and he winds up making his way to the UFC. Yes, Artem Levin. Artem Levin is a bad motherfucker though. Like that the dude he lost to is a beast. Mm. Um listen, man, there's a lot of good fights for him. Yeah. In in the UFC in one eighty five and in two oh five. The thing about him at two oh five is interesting is he's not even gonna gain any weight. Mm. He's just gonna fight. He's not gonna put any mass. He looks on his a little body. bigger. Maybe. Have you seen him? He looks a little bigger. I mean, he's a big guy. Like, but his advantage is speed, right? And precision. So, like, why reduce that? He has a lot of advantage. Yeah. His advantages are speed, accuracy, technical acumen. He understands yeah. striking better than anybody in the sport. He understands well, distancing yeah. and feints and reads, and he's just so intelligent. Like his. His uh, his fight IQ is off the charts. Yeah, he just know like the way he knew what was going to happen to Paulo Costa. Unbelievable. He was talking shit, and a lot of people talk shit, but yeah. he knew exactly, and he was laughing. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. just watch, just watch. I'm gonna piece him up. Just yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, there's a uh, <laughs> there's a my dad would always tell me about that when he was interviewing Ali before he fought uh, Foreman, and uh, people were going, this guy is destroying people. I mean, when Foreman fought Frazier. Before he fought Ali, do you remember yeah, he yeah. with like an lifted uppercut? Lifted him up in the air. Lifted him up in the air. Yeah. And my pops asked Ali, he said, uh, he goes, how are you going to beat this guy? I mean, this guy's just like destroying people. He's mauling. And he goes, uh, he, goes uh, he goes, this is what I do. He goes, I'm a scientist. Okay. This is what I do. Okay. You see what you do? I don't know what you do, but that's what you do. And he goes, what I am is a scientist. I'm going to pick this guy apart and I'm going to take him out. And literally. Yeah. I mean, he kind of like does a little ropey dope thing, obviously, but Rope-a-dope he took shit. him out. That shit was genius. Yeah, brilliant. Let that guy wear himself out. Yeah. Let him throw those big bombs. Yeah. Because that's what he did. Like, yeah. Rah. Yeah. Yeah. Rah. Yeah. Throw those bombs. It's yeah. uh, it's interesting to watch these uh, the Paul brothers. What I think is great about it is, first of all, if you're in the business to get eyeballs and make money. They are getting eyeballs and making money like no one ever. So let's let these MMA guys get paid. Let's yep. let these old boxers get paid. Here's the problem. Okay. If Jake Paul flatlines Conor McGregor. Ay, ay, ay. Do you understand? Ay, ay, ay. Do you understand? If if they somehow or another do a boxing match and, and Jake Paul cracks him and knocks him out, you got to realize also, how big is Jake? It's probably Logan is six. like 200. Yeah, Logan's about my height, but he's 200. Yeah. 
And I think he's about 6'2", Jake maybe like 200. Is solid. Probably similar. I right? think they're probably around the same. Yeah. 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 Solid. That's a lot bigger than Connor. Yeah. What is Connor? Like 5'8", maybe? 5'7"? Five, 5'8", mm, five, and probably walks around 175. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So a lean 190 versus a guy who's 175 ish. Yeah. Walking around at 175. When Connor fought uh, Cowboy, he really hardly cut any weight at all. Yeah. He just sort of weighed what he weighed. 170. Boom. And that's the same thing Con that Cowboy did. So that's, if he knocks him out. It's a big, big difference, man. That's a 20 pound gap or at least, you know, 15 pound I mean, gap. Nonstop shit talking. If oh he God. knocks him out. Yeah. Nonstop shit talking. Nonstop shit talking. I can't imagine him doing it. Beating Connor? Connor? No, no. I can imagine Connor taking the fight. I mean, he'd be silly not to take the you fight. You can't imagine him beating Connor? You think I Connor can't imagine him, him knocking out Connor. You, if you have so much experience in the ring, dude. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you learn how to survive in there. Like oh, Jorge sure. was a good example. Remember when uh, Jorge fought Kumaru, mm -hmm. and like he just has so much time in the fucking ring. Like I'd see these guys in the gym all the time. Like James Tony was one of these guys. Tony would just survive. You could put Tony in the ring probably right now mm -hmm. with an average heavy heavyweight. He might not land a single punch. He will survive twelve rounds. Yeah, he'll and just talk find a lot of shit too. It, the whole time getting yeah. hit. Come on, pussy. pussy. Yeah, come Poo on, pussy. Hit me, pussy. <laughs> The odds are that sounds good. Yeah, four to one, four hundred. Yeah, that makes sense. It's disrespectful Listen, to Connor. I'm not saying that Jake Paul would win. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if he won, Jesus fucking Christ, it's over. If he won, it's over. It's over, dude. If he won, if it's he over. beat Conor McGregor, it's over. <laughs> Who else does he fight? That's the thing. If if you beat Conor, you can't fight actual boxers because there's going to be a huge you know skill discrepancy right there. So you can only fight the MMA guys that have boxing training. No, he could fight some up and coming boxers, but there's not enough money in it. Right. You need superstars right. to generate this well, type of money. There's a lot of other NBA athletes that wanted to fight him after he knocked out Nate Robinson. Nobody's taking that fight after he knocks out Conor if he does. If he does, look, look, or he's calling it already. <laughs> See how excited <laughs> this is? What these kids do? It's yeah. like Dana White get involved with these kids. I know it's funny that he doesn't want. To, isn't I, it? I, it's like you and you can't act like you're like desecrating the sport or whatever because you took Connor into boxing when you know you had no business in there with with uh, Floyd. Yeah. So it's like, just make the biggest fights and make the most money that the people are most interested in. The average fight fan does not know him as much as you do. I yeah. watch I watch MMA all the time. I don't know what a Darce choke is. I, uh, they get on the ground and I, uh, to me it's a chicken wing I, or whatever it is, a triangle wing, whatever. It is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The point is, I have no clue about the jujitsu part at all. I try. I'm interested, but it's so much vocabulary and knowledge that I probably have to watch for a while to really understand it. I'm not going to bullshit. The striking I get, right? The average person has no fucking clue. It's a bar fight to the average person. Mm -hmm. But the average person is what's going to make you like this multimillionaire. Yes. Let's get them average people into it. Get them excited. Get them part of the, the wrestling of it, the hoopla. And let's let these guys who are literally risking their fucking lives make some money. Well, it's funny. It's like he did... Take that WWE guy. Um, God damn it. His name's Phil. What is his name? The fucking. Oh, yeah, CM Punk. He had CM Punk fight. But the guy twice. couldn't fight at all. No, but that's my point. Yeah. Is that he's famous. Uh, he took the fame. But F CM Punk is famous. Yeah. Like legitimately famous. And that's why he was able to fight in the UFC. So, same thing. These guys are famous. Dana. They, you might think they're internet famous, but uh, that, the, he's. Way more famous than than anybody else that you're thinking about in this sort of realm of like internet star There's that no can brainer. generate a lot of income and is willing to fight. That's the top of the food chain. And they can actually fight a they bit. They can fight. So they it's like, fight. and Dana, you're the best at promoting right now. I'll yeah. give that to him hands down. It's been amazing did what they Jake did. Jake Paul wrestle too? His, his brother wrestled. There's video of him getting uh, tapped out in, in like a UFC gym somewhere. Yeah. Some guy well, like. that's normal. Yeah. And again, that's where like a, an MMA fight with a guy like Dylan Dennis is not a good idea. You got to do boxing. Yeah. But what if he boxes the more like jujitsu based grappling MMA guys, right? The guys who don't have the, the same level of experience boxing. Like what if he fought well, he's Ben got Askren? He's got legit punching power. That's the thing. Yeah. Does he beat and up Ben also, Askren? <laughs> he's got legit punching power with big pro boxing gloves on. Oh. Not like little tiny MMA gloves. Mm -hmm. Like little tiny MMA gloves everybody has different power it's there it's it's small there there's there's no padding yeah but you know what i find a little bit different like when the boxers try to do the mma stuff the 
the MMA gloves are so small that they don't really operate as like a blocking mechanism right. in the way boxing gloves do. 100%. You know, like boxers, like a Floyd, if he had those little four ounce gloves, he's not going to be able to do that same Philly shell defense. Right. Because anything over the top... Hits you in the head. Boom. Yeah. And not only that, um, that uppercut that he got hit with, that would have really hurt him. Night, night. When, when Connor hit him. Yeah. Connor, I couldn't believe it. Connor cracked him. I couldn't believe it. Connor's got fucking legit power in MMA, but in boxing, he hit Floyd with that clean shot. It didn't really do much. Because Floyd's been hit. Yeah. He's been hit by Marcos Maidana. Mm -hmm. Short right hand. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to be stunned by any of these guys. Well, it's also like you could hit him once or twice until he gets your read. And then, and then understands where you're at yeah. and starts picking you apart. Yeah. Somebody told me that Floyd made a bet that the fight goes 10 rounds. And that's why it went 10 rounds. Probably. I mean, I think he carried him. In the 10th that's, round, he started I'm not trying to take it away from Connor, but like, Floyd's the greatest ever, buddy. Like, it, apparently he said he didn't even train. He just did push ups. <laughs> like, like, you know, Floyd's got some weird shit going on. Like, if you go to his Instagram, he's got a beard all of a sudden. I think he got like a beard injected. What? Bro, go to what his latest mean? Instagram pic. He's got hair, he's got a hairline, and he's got a full beard, but like stubble, like Enrique Iglesias shit. But I don't think he could grow a beard. F Floyd? Floyd Mayweather. Go to his latest Instagram pic. And he got all the comments taken off, like there's no comments on it. So to me, that lets me know you're getting lit up. And yeah, no, I think, I'm pretty minute. sure he got the fake beard. Yo, look, look, go in. That's a fake beard, bro. That's not a real beard. Wait a minute. There's no way we would have known you had this. How does he have a fake beard? I think they did the Michael Jackson shit. Remember Michael Jackson won a goatee and then he like inserted each one Hold of on. those hairs? Go, go go large on that. No comments. Get it, can you get it bigger? That's as big as I can get it. What is going on there? And look at his hairline. Go up. Floyd hasn't had hair since he's 23 years old. All of a sudden you got a hairline, buddy? This guy went to Turkey. Huh. So you think he had like a, f a hair transplant on his face? I think you could do that now. I think you can. And trust me, I know I can't grow a beard. So I'm like, really, when I see guys get a beard out of nowhere, I'm just like, I'm, I'm aware of it. Ah, you know, it's like a girl with small tits. Like she knows ah, every girl that has fake oh, tits. That you know? got fake tits. Yep. A hundred percent. So I, mm, this guy wants to show off that beard. Come on. That's the Logan fight. What if that's the Logan fight? He just wants to show off Who the full. Who gets a hair transplant on their face? He got almost a billion. Do you think he's a billion left? I bet he's got $100,000 in the bank. You're lying. I bet he spends, spent every fucking penny. Do you really think so? I think he spends as much money this as he This is gets. after he got out of prison in 2012. Yeah, so but that's 2012. Right, but he shaved. I know. I was just like looking for pictures of it. I mean, there's no real... Of a beard. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That, yeah, there's no way. I even huh. think the goatee might be fake. Why does it say no hair up there? Go all the way up. All the way up. Why does it say no hair? What does that say? Who has no hair? What does it say? Spends up to three thousand a week on haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, maybe he's broke. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, that guy lives like a wild man. He's got so many cars, and he doesn't even drive them. And he has different color cars for different cities. Yeah, like his cars in Vegas are all white. His yeah. cars in L.A. are all black. Yeah, so he's got this whole system. Did you buy some new shit once you got the check? Uh, not that much, man. No car. There's not something that you were like. Let me just indulge a little bit. I'm always indulging. All right. But uh, nothing special. Nothing crazy. No, no man. I felt like uh, I'm not going to do anything different. I'm not going to do the show any different. No, I know I'm you're not, not going to be different. But, but no, but that's why I felt like even with the money, I'm not doing anything different. Really? Yeah. yeah. kind of looks a little what? bit like Bro, that. Bro, he does. did that. What? 100% did that. Like that. What? 100%. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Fake beard, dude. What? Fake beard. Not even a question. Bro, that is nuts. That's nuts. Yep. Wait a minute. This is a thing? Yep. Oh my god! Plastic surgery for dudes, man. Go! Oh my god, that's exactly what it is, mm -hmm. dude. That's, that's gonna be popular, crazy. dudes. I bet you dudes are gonna start doing Botox big time. <gasps> oh, I bet you there's a lot gonna... of guys that do it already. They call it Brotox. You're lying. Nope. It's good branding. Yeah, they it's call really it Brotox. Yeah, Brotox. Guys, guys call it Brotox. Would you ever do Brotox? No, no. I need my expressions. That's true. Like, you're on stage and yeah. you can't do this. There's, I know comics. Dude, I'm not you're calling say, fights like, he knocked on the look and I hit down. He's down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know dudes who have uh, gotten that uh, Botox and fillers, and they look like a kabuki mask. No. Oh, yeah. Comics? Weird. Yeah, comics. What is this guy? Yeah. Wow. Listen, man, don't be afraid of lines, bitch. 
We should yeah. friends some skin lines. You oh, earn those dude. fuckers. Look at these. Yeah. Laugh lines. See, this shit, I love I the good this. life. Let's I go. I got this one from Fear Factor. Really? Yeah, this big line in between my eyeballs from being outside squinting because <laughs> I couldn't wear sun I couldn't wear sunglasses because I was filming the show. So I was outside eight hours a day for fucking six years <laughs> okay. squinting doing Fear Factor. Why couldn't you just wear the sunglasses? It wouldn't let me. Lie. It wouldn't let me wear sunglasses while I was filming. They wanted to see my eyes. Because I was doing a television show uh-huh. where I've got to tell people things and point out yeah. things. They, they don't want any sunglasses. Yeah. So I'm always doing this the whole, uh, every fucking day yeah. for years. And I developed this big ass crease <laughs> in between my eyebrows. <laughs> if you go to season one, I don't have <laughs> There's it. There's nothing there. Season one, Fear Factor, I don't have it. Season six or whatever the fuck it was, I had it. Yeah. But around like season four or five, started chilling up. I'm like, the fuck is this? Did you ever get disillusioned with that show? Like seeing what people would do? No. Or was it just the most money. fun? It was that just was a money show. That was that was that show was for money. That's yeah. it. That paid the bills. See, that's me. That's by the time. That's like late seasons. Oh yeah, that's that, that's deep I right got there. That deep line. See, but that early. Oh, look at that little early. cutie pie, huh? Oh, sweetie, I was probably wearing makeup then too. <laughs> This is great. Yeah, see? No line. That's season one. No <laughs> line. And then you go to season seven, fat ass line in between my eyebrows. Uh, that was just a show for money, man. You know, yeah. I did, I, and also a show because I didn't want to act anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Acting sucks. It's not fun. Why do we, like, dude. Oh, that's what I want to talk to you about. Did you see the Tom Cruise thing? No, I heard about it, though. I heard he goes off. This is a genius. Oh, I actually was saving that, saving listening to it to where I could listen to it on air okay. and give an honest assessment Can of we this. listen? Oh, yeah. Let's oh, this is so genius. I'm not even going to say what I think about it until oh, afterwards. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so glad I had the restraint because <laughs> I was taking a shit last night. And I was like, should I listen to this? I'm like, I know we're going to we're gonna talk about right, it. Go, 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 go. Eventually. A, it's maybe a three minute, a two minute, a one minute. It's like version. two minutes. Give me the three minute, man. I want to hear all the juice. <laughs> What's wrong? Maybe it's Good Morning America's version. Right oh, I don't want to yeah, hear Yeah, there's like a two America. minute clip that's on uh, that's on Twitter. And that, yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets a little Here redundant. We Here we go. Let me, sorry, let me check on Twitter. It'll be faster. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll talk. Why well, the, the Good Morning America one has Some too much? YouTube's going to have too much extra shit on it. Anyway. Oh. Yo, this guy's a genius, <laughs> is all I'll say. <laughs> Do you think he did it on purpose? Leaked I don't want to say until after oh, you see. No. I don't want to say until after you see. Jamie will find it any moment now. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. The pressure's on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Got it? Because they believe in us and what yeah. we're doing. I'm on the phone with every f-ing studio at night. Insurance company. Producer. And they're looking at us and using us to make their movies. We are creating thousands of jobs, you I don't ever want to see it again. Ever. And if you don't do it, you're fired. And I see you do it again, you're gone. And anyone on this crew does it. That's it. And you too. And you too. And you. Don't you ever do it again. That's it. No apologies. You can tell it to the people that are losing their f***ing homes because our industry is shut down. It's not going to put food on their table or pay for their college education. <laughs> come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's what I sleep with every night. Come on. That's what I sleep with every night. Come other than dudes. <laughs> Keep going. Same shit. The responsibility that you have. Okay. I think, I first of all, it's interesting hearing someone yell with a mask on. Well, right? Because you could clearly hear, he's yelling through a mask. The, the fo- it could have been someone's phone in their pocket, too. Or Maybe. he had a mask on. You Probably had a, a mask on. He was yelling about Maybe. COVID I protocols. Could hear a lot of muffling on that. I thought it was. Yeah, there's right. that, too. But it's also the sound coming out of his yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. he's wearing a mask. Muffled. But who has a blow up and says all the right things? 
He does. He's everything he said was right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why he leaked it. Yeah. Of course you leaked it. He leaked it. You think? Of course. Joe, he just had a blow up where he's like, "We're sa- we need to save people's lives. People lo- are losing their jobs. They just want to pay for college education." When you're angry, you don't act rationally when you're screaming, you don't? right? No. Do you? Yeah. When you scream, you're being. Well, we need to care about the turtles and stop using plastic straws. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how that's you're gonna like yell. Me. That sounds like me. Get out of here! <laughs> Come on. There's not a single like slur. No, I you didn't have one did, slur. I think what he did was perfect. No, no. What he did was fine, but he leaked that shit so he you could look so? good. Yeah, when Christian Bale was cursing at the guy for like right. making noise on set, right? For fuck's sake, man, be professional. Most likable he's ever been. Yeah, I love that. I love I love the actor blowouts because it's authentic. You get to see who they are. And if you're yeah. a douchebag, I'm fine with that. Just be you, you know? People were mad at him for that, but I was like, that guy's probably in his line of sight and fucking with things in the middle of a scene while the guy's trying to act. And a lot of those guys on sets are disrespectful. Like, they yeah. don't respect the process that the actors are going through. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people that are just idiots. Yeah, they're just walking I've around. I've seen but- that on sitcoms. I've yeah. seen that with... Lighting people and sound people. A lot of them are knuckleheads. Yeah, but acting stupid also. We it's should acknowledge goofy. that. But I love movies. So I'm That's torn. the problem. So I'm torn. It's like you want to see these things, but at the same time you're like, ah, this is so corny. It is corny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he had to, I mean, like, you. come on, you had to be in control of leaking that. There's, there's no way. It's like, well, it just makes him look maybe, good. Maybe, maybe not. It, uh, it's a uh, dramatic blowout. Dramatic blowouts are always good. Like people like them. They like to listen. We just listened. I was enjoying it. I liked all that screaming shit. He's Do you think he really guy. cares? Um. Yeah. Yeah, he cares. He's making a movie. He's a movie star. What are you doing? What are you saying? <laughs> you don't think he cares? No. He's Doesn't these motherfuckers care, dude? He's such an odd guy. Have you met him? No. No, but I mean just everything about him. The whole Scientology thing. Yeah. The, like it's he's. What's the deal with that? Does it work? <laughs> Like, does it work? Like, what we all hate on it before we know if it works. Well, it was created by a science fiction author. So were they all. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's not different from any other book, right? It's, they say some well, wild shit in all the books. Does this one a, work the best? Here's the difference. First of all, it was created by a guy who we know. L. Ron. Yeah, I mean, he was a terrible science fiction author. Have you ever read his books? They're so no. bad. There was no second drafts in L. Ron's collection. He See just that? spewed out yeah, whatever yeah, the fuck yeah. he was saying, and it's really dumb. Just First Testament. They're really no, bad. Yeah, yeah. And he was, like, have you ever read Going Clear from Lawrence Wright? No. It's, it's a great book. Wait, is Lawrence Wright the second guy? Lawrence Wright is the guy who wrote the book uh, that HBO turned into uh, a documentary on Scientology. Yes. And okay. The the book Going Clear is even better than the documentary, and it's, yeah. it's crazy shit, man. It's all talking about L. Ron, that L. Ron was basically, like... He was a guy who was mentally ill. Right. And he was trying to, he was trying to create some sort of psychology therapy for himself. Yeah. Through like books and self help books, and then he created and concocted this religion, after isn't, telling people that the way to make mo- real money is to start a religion. But isn't that how all of them go? Like the Mormons, right? What was the dude's name? Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Yeah. Yo, I got these tablets. They're popping yeah. up. Whatever. We should go to Salt Lake City. All the new. That's ones. crazier, isn't yeah. it? Well, and not, we just confirmed there's aliens, so he's not that crazy. He's crazy. He was a 14 year old no. kid who was a con man. He's a crazy con man. What I'm what I'm trying to say is, does it work? What do you mean, does it work? Like things can be bullshit and then they work, like the economy. Right. It's okay. bullshit, but right. it works. Right. Do you know okay. what I mean? So maybe this Scientology thing, maybe we go and then maybe we're less stressed. Send Ben Shapiro. Blah. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe maybe Ben gets clear and then no. all of a sudden he's like super cool. Ben is a Jew and the J- Judaism is what keeps him together. That's his glue. Okay. That's well, the bubble gum that keeps his paper. Just maybe there's better glue. Together. Maybe there's some maybe. cement. And maybe you go to Scientology, you get clear. I don't know. I'm just no. saying I know nothing about it. It's like country music. Like when, when I was growing up in New York, like I, everybody told me country music was stupid. Right, so I was like, "Yeah, the only music I don't listen to is country." Like it was just a, a saying that we would have. Like I listen to everything except country. I never listened to country music. I started listening to country music. It's incredible. There's some great country music. It's, out my, there. it's like Especially my favorite today. It's unbelievable country music. Yeah, and I listen to like 
the Britney Spears of country music. I listen to like Rascal Flatts and I just love it. Like life is a highway. I'm all about life is a highway. I'm into oh, it. Really? Life is a highway, bro. Life is a highway. Yeah, we're going to ride it. All night long? Damn right, Joe. Okay. Damn right. So my point is, is like maybe Scientology got like a couple things that are pretty good. Well, here's what Scientology does. Mm -hmm. So what Scientology does for people is it gives them a structure. It gives them a belief system. It gives them some goals to set, some things to do. Yeah. And it you're concentrating on being positive and and being productive yeah anything where you concentrate on being positive and being productive is going to be beneficial as opposed to no structure at all mm. no concentrating on being positive no concentrating on being productive mm. tom cruise is obviously a very positive very productive person he gets a lot of shit done the dude's a beast, beast. i mean the dude does his own fucking stunt work and he's like 56 years old looks and great he jumps off buildings he's yeah. a savage yeah like legit respect for tom cruise crazy as cat shit He's out of yeah. his fucking mind. Likes but, to likes to get likes likes guys a little bit or no? Uh, I That's joked around word. about that earlier because I'm rude. But but I don't know. Do you think he's, he's had a bunch cool. of children with women? So how about you fuck off, Andrew Schultz? But he they have the same name as him, right? That's arrogant. What? What do you mean? When you like marry a girl who's got your last name? What like are you talking about? Penelope Cruz. Oh. They didn't marry her. Oh, he didn't. No, he was, was just, just dating for a little while. Whatever. Point That's is, the movie. One, one yeah, girl. It was the movie, right? Vanilla Sky, right? Oh, they no, but I think they together. were they were like hooking yeah. up a little bit. Um, yeah. So what if he's gay? I don't care. I well, I think there's probably a lot of people in Hollywood that are gay that are leading men that can't come out of the closet because there's one thing that you can't do in Hollywood that you like for whatever reason. Mm. Hollywood pretends that it's not homophobic at all. What is this? Movie. I don't know. He's What's done? Is he doing? That's a wild boy right there. Is he there, jumping bro. off that? That's yeah. a wild ass. Oh boy my god! Right there. He's base jumping. Yeah. That is a wild Gee, ass crazy, boy right there. He's crazy, bro. Come on, dog. He's he is a real How bad you do motherfucker. That and you're afraid to say you're gay. Well, it's not. This that is a, way I, this scarier. Is, this is my thing. Yeah, yeah. This is not saying Tom Cruise is gay. I was joking yeah. around before about him sleeping with guys. But he but, could get cracked open by guys. But that is true. That's a possibility. True. Men do fuck men, so you they might do. be right. And he could be getting cleaned here's, the fuck out by them, here's right? Here's my thought. Hollywood pretends to be super woke and super progressive, but mm. there is one border they do not cross. Mm. They do not have gay men, openly gay men, play straight heartthrobs in movies. It mm. never happens. It does not happen. Because there is an accounting for the homophobia of a modern society, it is, 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 as le yeah. as lessened as it is, as opposed to like the seventies and the eighties and the nineties, there is still homophobia, and people do not want to see an openly gay man making out with a woman, pretending that he's in love with her, and they don't. We don't believe in the romance. We can't have we an can't. openly gay James Bond actor mm -mm. who goes banging spies and fucking people up they don't exist yeah that's the one thing that doesn't exist and it traditionally has not existed maybe tom cruise could be the guy that breaks that mold you if he was right gay and came that. out of the closet yeah like doogie hauser what's his real name yeah that guy pat neil patrick harris yeah that guy was killing it he was like a lothario in that one show remember mm -hmm. he was in that sitcom where like how i met your mom yes right and then he comes out as gay, and now he's got to be weird characters. Yeah. Right? He's got to be like... That, uh, that's a sitcom world. It's a different world. Tom Cruise is in the blockbuster yeah, yeah, action movie yeah, yeah, world yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. international. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's selling that's movies right. to Saudi China. Arabia doesn't want to see you. <laughs> you get smoked out yeah. and then hook it up with some hot if, chick. <laughs> if he was banging dudes openly, if Tom Cruise said, yeah. listen, all these years I've been a gay man, and it's frustrating for me, it's over. Yeah. That, that machine... Fucking grinds to a halt. Yeah, Bang. yeah. It's Dude, over. Hollywood is so funny, man. It's over. If The Rock turned yeah. out to be gay, is would a super athlete like The Rock, a gigantic superhero of a man, if all of a sudden The Rock said he's gay and he, and he and I'm not saying he's his, I'm right? Just saying I love The Rock. Yeah, I'm a giant Rock fan. Shout to Terra. And Mana. even if he was gay, I'd be a giant Rock fan. Yes. But what I'm saying is that international he could movie take that world. From you if he wanted, bro, if he was gay, probably he yeah. could take that. He'd probably have a lot of problems. Oh yeah. I'd have a You're lot gonna of need problems. a lot of PBC peptides, yeah. BPC, it, whatever that is. You're gonna need a lot of that <laughs> right to recover from. <laughs> <laughs> it's just right up there. Um, but the point is, like, I think that would severely damage his brand as an international yeah. lead man yeah. superstar yeah now it is true how things work like that you get you have to and it's like i don't think it's uh bigoted to think like that 
because you're making that prediction based on financial returns. Yes. It's not... I'm not bigoted. When you just I'm, understand... When I'm looking at yeah. it, I'm just looking at the reality of leading men in movies right. that are gay. Leading men in yeah. movies, when they're gay actors, they wind up being the best friend of the wife yeah, or yeah, someone yeah. else or a guy at work. They never wind up being the romantic lead. I'm not saying you're big. I'm saying even Hollywood making those decisions yes. because they're literally just trying to get return on investment. It's like selling bacon at like a Muslim restaurant or something. Right. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter how good the bacon is, no right. matter how much you like bacon, not they're selling. not going to eat it. They're yeah. Not, yeah. When you look, hmm. China influences film so much that they change Doctor Strange's guru from a tibetan man to a white woman yo that's hollywood's pussy with that china shit i won't it's be able to go to money. china by the it's way after this thing comes out money it's a lot of money there's I bet no you way won't be able to go to china we go kind of hard on china you don't have to go to china i don't need to go to china you can stay in new york city you don't i've to seen to it i've seen it have you been looks busy it's very busy china very busy yeah it's probably similar to yeah, they have the good new york food, one they have good chinese food do they? Allegedly. That's what That's they where say. came from. I love Chinese food. Yeah, but Comes what if China. it sucks, dude? Oh what if we're getting a whole different type of Chinese the, like, food? Like Italian food in the East Coast is different than Italian food in Italy. Exactly. We might not want mm. that little thin pizza shit. Ah. Right? The little thin crunchy pizza? We don't want that, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Keep that in Firenze. <laughs> <laughs> you fanooks. No, <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a there's a thing with I don't know. I I I, I do understand and I have like empathy for people in those situations like where you have to make a decision that's based on like finances like literally two days ago i don't know if i told you this but like the head ep i can't say his name but like who basically got the show made mm -hmm. on on my side the yeah. netflix show uh called me he's like hey man i just watched it i gotta take my name off this show what and i go i go what do you mean he goes you're making fun of all my friends he goes like Gavin Newsom comes to my house. Like Kamala uh, comes to my house. Like like they've been all these celebs that you're talking shit about. What did you call him? A blow up fuck doll. I what did what did you call him? His, what did you uh, call him? Yeah, yeah, in, inflatable fuck doll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, CNN went after him the other day. Really? That's when you know it's so over. people aren't into. Well, they they recognize that his yeah. his ship is sinking. Same there's with a Cuomo. Recall. Yeah, there's a recall for Gavin yeah. Newsom right now. It's reached over eight hundred thousand signatures, which is big. And um, wow. if it reaches two million, then it can it can actually happen. But the fact yeah. that CNN went after him, I'm like, oh, they're they're sacrificing him. They realize yeah. that the what he's doing, and especially after going to that restaurant and sitting indoors with no mask yeah. after telling everybody to social distance. Look at this. Yeah, how it all went so wrong for Gavin Newsom. I just want and to tell scroll people scroll down lower than that so you see what the what it says there. Yeah, this is um when what they're they're basically. They're amplifying the signal that it's going wrong for him. When when they're doing things like that, they recognize they're separating the sail, themselves. Yeah, the, where where the ship is sailing. But also fuck them. Like fuck it. I think Tim Tim Dillon had a great tweet where he's just like, any governor, or any politician that breaks their own protocol, yeah, resign, resign, and you should fucking resign. And you should go to jail. Yeah, honestly, yeah. castration. Mm. What do you do for the women? Do it as well. No female genital. Oh. No, no, no. What are you talking about? Oh, I don't know. Do I don't know Egypt? what you can do for the women. What's the thing they, they do in they Egypt? Do the children. Oh God! But the female genital mutilation. It's yeah. horrific. Yeah. The, I don't. Yeah. I don't wish that on anybody. Yeah, that's really bad. We shouldn't do that. Why is it's it just, so much more fun should, to talk should, about guys' know, balls getting chopped off? Because we're we're guys. That's it's true. A free, it's a free. Leave shot. the girls' vaginas alone. Yeah. Okay. Just put them in jail. Put them in jail. The men, I think they have to resign no matter what, and then maybe jail. Joking around about jail, but legitimately resign. Yeah, we're joking around about jail, but I legitimately think they should be forced to resign. Because but also, if you break your own protocol. If you're Nancy Pelosi yeah. and you have yeah. shut down beauty salons, and then you oh, go yeah. to a beauty salon with no fucking mask on, you yeah. force them to do your hair. It's yeah. over. We Get out. Yeah, we Get out. You're a hypocrite. It's proven. We have a video that you're a hypocrite. And then when they talk to her about it, she's like, I think it was a setup. She flipped it on them. I, yeah. Low key, I respected that. That's what she does. She's that was That was nice. She flipped it on them back when she was telling people to go out in New York City in February. What she said? Yeah, she was telling people to go out in New York City. She's like, don't stop going out. Go oh, to when she was in San Francisco. San go Francisco. Out. No, I think it was New York City. Oh, I thought she was in her own San Francisco Chinatown Maybe. saying like, uh, hey, we should be out here. We should be spending money. But we should do our thing. I think she was talking about New York City. Maybe. But ma either way. The but yeah, point all is, of them. They're fucking frauds. The point is after yeah. it was over, she was like, the record will show that that's not what I was saying. Like she speaks in this weird and she doesn't get called out on it. 
Ocasio Cortez takes direct shot at Pelosi and Schumer. Yeah. The progressive star bluntly stated that we need new leadership in the Democratic Party. She mm. just wants straight up socialism. They want to go hard with the work stuff. Yeah, that's the tricky thing. It's like the young that people. Is gonna, yeah. That is going to kill the party. That socialism shit is going to kill the party. People are not down mm. for that. Defund the police. Yeah. Socialism shit. That radical left stuff scares the fuck out of people with mortgages. They just don't get the branding of it at all. They're well, really bad at branding. Well, it's Unbelievable. They, they get a lot of love for that. That thing. But it's, it's not love. It's like, Joe, like you're a testament to this where it's. If you have a reasonable, rational point of view, sometimes it leans left, sometimes it leans right, but it's reasonable and it's rational, and you're not positioning the other side as evil, right? Yeah. With your show, you end up having the biggest show in the history of media so far, right? These people on CNN or Fox News or the AOCs or whoever the AOC is on the other side, right, are playing to the loudest 10% on the internet, but mm -hmm. they're losing the rest of us. 80% right. of us are literally right here in the middle going, fuck, I can't trust these guys. I can't trust these guys. Yeah. I, who the hell am I going to trust? Oh, that guy's got a podcast where he has interesting guys going on. Isn't that crazy? They're yeah. like, you didn't even market. You didn't even ask for this. Like, were you sitting down going, one day I'm going to have the biggest podcast in the world. People are going to come to me for truth. <laughs> right? You're like smoking weed with Red Band. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it just fucking, it fell into your lap because you're like, these guys, I imagine you probably thought earlier on, you were there's a little more skepticism uh, about media early on for you. No? Maybe it comes from like the conspiracy type background? Well, I've always had skepticism for people that are in power that are establishing a narrative that, you know, benefits politicians or benefits special interest groups or yeah. whatever the fuck they're doing when it's pr transparent and obvious. It just drives me nuts like how these groups don't see it and then you see uh, that like that kind of wedge it keeps being driven and driven and driven they're and in that fucked up world though dude that world of politics is uh, so baffling. But they have to represent us in a certain way and once they realize that they're losing us they will change these people want power right some of them want change but most of them especially the ones that have been there for 40 years they want power yeah. and they're willing to manipulate their bodies in whatever way that they can to maintain power so the second we start saying that we want weed to be legal all of a sudden all these same stiffs that have been saying weed shouldn't be legal and it's horrible all them well you know it could really help states and yeah. this is a drug for medicine purposes and all this other nonsense they don't care they do whatever we want yeah. so let's create the situations where they we can i guess manipulate them maneuver them or whatever it is by just putting truth out there Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't even think it's that hard It's not that hard to put truth out there And you know just to be honest about Your opinions on things Is controversial in that world The, the <sighs> world you have a established narrative That you're supposed to adopt yeah. Your left wing or your right wing That's the bullshit about it is they give you the talking points yeah. They literally hand them to you no, no, yeah, If you're on CNN they've, they discuss What you're going to say and how you're going to say it Yeah, You ever see, hear those tapes of Cuomo yeah, yeah, talking yeah, 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 to uh, yeah, yeah, Michael Cohen, yeah, yeah. talking him through how they're going to do this interview and what he should say. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. It's propaganda. It is propaganda. And we're starting to see it. It's and propaganda like, on a news show. On a news show. And we, it's so funny. He's like, we would like clown Russia and all these other countries for doing this exact same thing mm -hmm. and sit here like, oh, well, we yeah. have freedom of the press and all that other stuff. Okay. What you're going to say is make sure left wing. Yeah. It's just bullshit because at the end of the day, like we have the internet now. We can access mm -hmm. information. We're not stupid. Right. 10% of us on each side just want to be told what we feel is right. And that 10% is way too little for them to actually maintain their business model. I shouldn't be here and you shouldn't be here. Right. They should have never opened up that hole for us to exist outside of the industry. Yeah. Like the fact that they left that hole gaping wide open. Well, we both do very different things than what they're doing though. Because but they they're, could literally be they could pull it close. Yeah, but they can't. See, you can't talk shit on CNN. What we do that is so comforting to people mm. is we talk shit like they would if they're with their friends yeah. and they're sitting around the kitchen table crack of beers talking shit. Yeah. We talk shit. Yeah. They talking shit is an integral part of being a man. Yeah. It's very important. So if you yeah. see a bunch of men on television and they're never talking shit, it's a or problem. when they do talk shit, it's like Don Lemon shit talking. Yeah. Where you're like, what is happening here? Why yeah. why is anyone laughing at this? Like yeah. what is this? It's like uh 
theater class shit talking <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's like some odd form of shit talking that doesn't <laughs> yeah. really make sense yeah. to it's an improv game yeah it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense to actual males yeah so when you see these people that are talking about important issues but they never say it in a natural voice they never say it in an honest interpretation like they don't have an honest view based on their life and what they see it's always through the party line yeah it's always through this ideology that they have to support I call yourself out when you're wrong why yeah. is that to, like yeah. dude, first time I came on the show I said Netflix was gonna go out of business yeah <laughs> I was wrong you know Netflix is done listen I was wrong I yeah. looked at the numbers now I thought I was Netflix, right bitch. now I'm on fucking Netflix okay I call myself out on it I can say it it's fine like you know how refreshing that is when you yeah. hear somebody like I think when you, I think even uh, it was something that happened with you. Like you corrected something you said on a pod. Yeah, you yeah, put yeah. out a video yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Right. And it's fucking refreshing because then you're like, oh, I can trust that guy because if he does get something fucking wrong, he's going to say it. Yeah, and I will every time. And that all, all people also thought that Spotify asked me to do that. Literally, no one asked me to do that. Jamie, I wa this uh, that was a five minute decision. I walked in here. Jamie said, oh, that thing that you said about that is wrong. I'm like, mm. no, really? And he shows me the article, and I'm like, fuck, what should I do? I go, and I was about to do a podcast. I go, I'm going to make a video. Mm. So I just made a video right there and then, one take, uploaded it, and then did the podcast. And what do that I remember? It. I don't remember the content. I don't remember what you apologize about. I just remembered that you apologize when you were wrong. I will always do that. But I then don't, people I, trust you. I don't, I'm never married to my opinions. Mm. And if I have a mistake, I think it's way more important that I say a, the mistake and tell people the actual facts yeah. than protect my fucking fragile ego Yeah. and pretend that I didn't fuck up and that I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, 100%. If you get something wrong, you got to say it. And if you get duped, you know, if you read some incorrect information, we've done that a hundred times. Mm -hmm. We're like, like I've said something early on in the podcast, and an hour later, Jamie's like, "Well, actually, that's not true anymore." Yeah, <laughs> you find out some, you find out it's a lie. You find out it's propaganda or it's a parody site. Did Trump just recently tweet something? Of course, from a parody site, the Babylon Bee or something <laughs> yes, like that. Yes. They're funny over they're there. They're funny, at the Babylon man. Bee. Yeah, it's somebody like just sent me something from that today, and they didn't know it was fake. Yeah, yeah what but they get people all the time with that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think happens with Trump? What do you think the the next stage of Trump? Jamie has a theory. Okay, Jamie. See, well, just be a, with the potential uh, California recall of Newsom. Uh huh. There's an internet push that could say, "Hey, why don't you go take over California? It's on its own, the fifth largest country in the world with the economy." And imagine someone could take Trump over. takes over California, brings it back to life, gets wow. rid of all the homelessness, wow. and then comes back and runs for president again in 2024 and lins, wow. wins by a yeah. landslide. Make, flips make flips California. California. Great again. Imagine, dude, he flips California. <laughs> and people are like, why would you even want that? Why would you want that? Yeah. I'm not saying I want that. I, I like ridiculous shit. I like chaos. I do. I now enjoy we're that. talking, baby. I enjoy it. That's that would be chaos. Schwarzenegger became governor when there was a recall right? yes so gray a... yeah they recalled gray and then uh schwarzenegger took it took over that was 2003 Eight, three? okay i mean I who knows who yeah. knows what's who knows? going on who knows? who knows what's going on but he's gonna be around like he's looking a little silly now with when he keeps on like leaning into like the voter fraud shit like yeah. yes there's voter fraud i think there's probably voter fraud every single election yeah. and yes there's shady shit going on yeah. was there enough for him to lose the election nothing i've read or watched so far no has showed me that no i haven't read that either but it's it's interesting that some people don't even want to admit there's voter fraud yeah like i do not believe there was enough voter fraud to flip the election the other way but i have some like hardcore lefty friends yeah and they're like that's all this voter fraud shit is bullshit i go no no, no. here's the question here's, <laughs> like, here's my question is the amount of voter fraud more yeah. than zero yes What's the number? Yeah. What is the number? That's the question. Because you know there's some. Yeah. So what's the number? Yeah. You know there's some stuff ballots. You know there's some bullshit. You know there's some people working there flipping votes for the other people. Hundred percent. You know that that Dominion fucking could be that shady. Shit is shady as fuck. Dude, bare minimum. I think there was a story about like a, a a a husband and wife. The husband ends up dying, like two old people, but they had their mail in ballot. And yeah. I think she sent it in anyway, uh -huh. knowing like who he would vote for. That's fraud. Yes. You're not allowed to do that. Dead yes. people aren't allowed to vote. How many of those situations are there to flip an election? I don't think so. I mean, it got lost Probably by a lot. Probably not enough. That being said, there is voter fraud, and he's leaning in, I imagine, to the voter fraud thing to, like, 
continue to you know bolster up his base and delegitimize the loss because he's always about branding. Yeah. That's all he understands is branding. Yeah. Constant. And it's actually a smart move if you lost how you can keep those people emboldened. Yeah. But I think the average person that was kind of like drawn to him is only drawn to him in terms of like um, his victory state. And I think that they're starting to kind of sour a bit on Trump. They kind of think he's looking a little bit pathetic now. Yeah. It doesn't look good. Yeah. You know, when you... When you're uh, a simple person, and this is not a, a, an insult, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that support Trump that look at things in a very simplistic way. Right. You know, like, God wants Trump to win. Yeah. Like that kind of shit. Yeah. When you're a simple person, you don't respect losers. Yeah. Now, when a person yeah. loses and then complains about losing, you don't respect that. So yeah. you got two choices. Either you go along with the narrative that they point. stole the election. Yeah. And, you know, and then you're not sure if that's true. Yeah. Because you don't really have enough data. You don't have it in front of you. So you go with it, but you're like, uh, I don't know if that's true. And then yeah. you see him complaining about it all the time. But then you see that, like, the Electoral College, they all, they just they established Biden as the winner. Like, yesterday or th yeah they finally said, handed it. it over yeah it's yeah. over he won yeah so what's happening so these people are in limbo they don't know what to yeah. believe yeah because he looks when someone's complaining and whining about it being stolen yeah. you look pathetic yeah whining is never good yeah you look pathetic yeah like when he gets criticized by uh reporters and he's like well, what they did was terrible we won and we won huge we yeah. went huge. We went bigger than anybody's ever won before. Yeah. And you're like, oh, did you though? Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is, but here's the other thing. It's also crazy that we don't trust the whole process anymore. Yeah. We don't. And what he's doing is by saying that he, he won and that he's being robbed, it undermines the entire electoral process. Yeah. It and really that's, does. That's what's douchey for self interest, yeah. right? Like, and I think that's, just as douchey as these like networks that like drive the wedge for profit, like yeah. he is driving that wedge for profit, right? I don't think he's doing it out of you know patriotism. But here's the thing: he's yeah. done that in the past. Yeah, this is what he does. He did that with about I believe he did it about Ted Cruz. He did that about other elections. Yeah. We're saying that there was fraud. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about the primary. Yeah, when he lost the primary in what was the state? I don't know. He lost the primary in one of the states to Ted Cruz. And he, and he blamed, claimed. yeah, he said it was, it was 2016, right? Yeah. And he yeah. blamed uh, voter fraud. Like, you you can't cry wolf like that. Yeah, you got to just take the L, man. We respect it. If people take the L on the chin, it is what it is. But it does make you realize, like, boy, the dirty shenanigans behind the scenes is valuable. Oh, yeah. That dirty shit is how you win an election. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. Don't yeah. they say? Didn't they say that's how JFK won? Like, didn't the? Oh yeah. Isn't that the rumor? The whatever? mob. Yeah, the, the mob, mob hooked it up in Chicago. Yeah. Illinois was apparently not going his yeah. way, and he needed it. I heard that Abraham Lincoln did that shit too. I'm sure. So sometimes it works out. Yeah. That's the shitty thing. Is like sometimes the democratic sometimes process is wrong. President. Yeah. So like sometimes you need. Right. Like Kennedy was a great president for as long as he stayed alive. Yeah. 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 But maybe they would have hated him if he did two terms too. Maybe they don't like anybody unless you go out in a box. That's so true. If you die, Who do we like Lincoln and Kennedy, everybody else can eat shit. We kind of like Reagan because he took a bullet and walked it off. George Washington and First liberals Canada. do not like Reagan at all. Right? No. So he's like a right wing hero, but he's a you know left wing devil. In right, a lot of but ways. he's the only right wing hero of former presidents. H. W. Bush was never a right wing hero. Right. G. W. is not One a right wing hero. Yeah. Well, Herbert Walker was one term. It's, uh, w was two terms. Bro, it's amazing to see the hit Obama's taken. Yeah. Like, that to me is mind boggling. You have to constantly fight for your reputation even after you're president yep. and a beloved president. Like, yep. that's why he's putting out that book. He's literally like, oh shit, black people don't fuck with me like they used to? All right, I got to put out a book to let everybody know I tried my best. You think that's what it is? 100%. Black Charlemagne people don't fuck Charlemagne with him asked like he used to? I think so. I what think did, there's a what lot did Charlemagne of Charlemagne ask him. He was like, uh, he goes, you know, why didn't you do more for black people? I think essentially, or why do people not know that? And then he explained that the political process, the system itself, makes it very difficult to do specific things. Like he can't yeah. make a local government do something. That's right. up to your local government. That's why you have to vote for these people. And he's not wrong. He's 100 percent right about that. But still, the idea is that the president is our savior, and he's going to do these things to make our lives better. And when he doesn't, we're kind of resentful. Yeah, dude, the, the presidency getting in there and trying to get something to happen yeah. and try to make things happen has got to be brutally difficult. Bro, and that's why the thing about Trump is quite interesting is like he, he did these things that you think he made them happen, but he didn't actually. 
Like he did a lot of these like um, executive orders. Mm-hmm. And the problem with the executive order is they can be switched. Exactly. And yeah. When you actually get like a law passed, like say what you want about Obamacare and who gives a fuck if it's good or bad. I don't know enough to even tell you, but that shit is entrenched. Yeah. Like, They've been trying to get rid of that shit for the last four years, and it hasn't really been taken all the way down. And because once you get something passed, it's kind of locked in. Yeah. But our system is built in a way where it's very difficult to lock things in. And when you're not willing to make any of those compromises, like none of these fucking hacks are, it makes it very difficult to have like long-lasting change. Yeah, it really does. It sucks, dude. Like, Why would anybody want to be a politician? You just got to lie to people. Like, You're the newest liar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Trump was an, an enigma, right? Because he it looked at least like he wasn't like um he wasn't under the control, I guess, of the elites. You know yeah. what I mean? But the rest of them, you're just the newest liar. Hey, do us a favor, lie to these people for four years. Oh, you got another four? Okay, lie to them, tell them some shit that's gonna happen, it ain't. And then someone else comes out, you're the newest you liar. What Trump should do. What's that? A fucking podcast. Dude, he would murder. murder. Actually, he might need an audience. He might need the reaction. Do a live podcast. He give, would kill. Give them all COVID. Have all the people <laughs> in the audience have a fucking COVID hotspot every week. COVID cast. Dude, I mean, I don't know. It's just so interesting. Like, going into politics, like, there's there's so many other ways to influence people, influence culture. Like, And I don't think they're done through well, the, the political sphere. Well, the other sphere. people that do it, first of all, the people that get involved, like Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. That guy's such a low-rung intellect. That I don't know if there's anything else where he would be successful at like that. How where sad it's a is that? Public in 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 a, a a public space where you're speaking to large numbers of people. Yeah. You're influencing large numbers of people. Yeah. What else would that guy do where he would have that kind of influence and power? No. The reason why he got that gig is because nobody who's really intelligent and really ambitious and is really on the it. ball wants to be the fucking mayor of L.A. Yeah. The weirdos want to be the mayor yeah. of L.A. Yeah. Weird you have to people. be a sociopath. Yeah. You're going to, no matter every decision you make, some people end up dying. Here's my favorite part about him, though. What is that? He tried so hard to be progressive, as progressive as possible. Uh-huh. He went out of his fucking way. And then it ate and him. And now Black Lives Matter has been protesting at his house every day for the last 22 <laughs> days in a row. They're going to eat you. Because it turns out that the Biden administration wants uh, to use him for something. Uh, they might not. With transportation secretary off the table, speculation remains over a possible cabinet position for Garcetti. Yeah, but the point is, Black Lives Matter is at his fucking house every day protesting. And they're protesting, first of all, defund the police. Mm -hmm. But they're as hardcore lefty Marxist as you can get. Mm -hmm. Defund the police. Mm -hmm. And they they want, uh, they're angry at his, the way he's handled the homeless situation. Yeah. He wants them to take care of the homeless situation yeah. and police brutality. And so they yeah. don't want him getting, they don't want him failing upward. They're calling him the worst mayor in history. And these guys are the people that he was trying to appease, yeah. which is hilarious. Like, yeah. you can't, well, those Stop hardcore leftists. To people please, man. Oh. Those hardcore leftists, they don't want liberals, they want leftists. Yes. Yeah. They want full on yeah. radical yeah. change in the way yeah. we do everything. Yeah. Change the way Paul. Change the way f- money is processed. Yeah. Change in the way people get paid. Change the way well, finance wealth is, is distributed. Yeah, they, they, those people have. There's no end to that game. If you try yeah. to d- dip your toes in that water and court them, yeah. good luck, bitch. You're gonna be like Garcetti. Yeah. they're gonna be pounding on your door. Yeah, twenty two days in a row. Yeah. Twenty two days in a row, man. Look at that. Defund the police. Hashtag block Garcetti. You know the problem with the defund the police thing is like I, I started to look into it. It and we were talking, we do like a piece about that like talks about part of this, but like it's such a shame because the marketing once again is just trash. Mm-hmm. A lot of cops would agree with a lot of the things within defund the police. Like cops don't want to like deal with mental health issues. Right. The average cop does not want to handle people who are crazy. Right. Right. They want to protect average citizens from, I don't know if it's more or less sane people, but from people who are breaking the law and potentially putting their lives at Mm -hmm. risk. And that's what they get in there for. And now they're dealing with people who are like mentally ill in the middle of a park. And it's like, what the fuck is going, don't we have another? So I think part of the defund the police thing is like, why don't we reallocate funds so that there are specific groups of people that are positioned just to do this? And I think the average cop would be like, yeah, that'd be kind of dope. Why yeah. use wording that you know is inflammatory, you know is going to piss people off, and you know is not going to get the support from the people who actually would support it? Yeah. It's like the same thing with this democratic socialism. Just mm-hmm. take the word out. The, the country already has so many of these programs that support poor people. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Like if you're poor, there is Medicare. There is welfare. There right. is Medicaid. There are all these things where that are kind of like socialist policies when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Right? We have what is it for old people? Where they get uh take care security? of we have social security. Like these are socialist programs, but when mm-hmm. you put the fucking word in, you know it's gonna rile people up. You know it's gonna yeah, piss but, people d- off. But like, what are you doing? Bernie Sanders was running on the platform of democratic socialism and they were so scared of him they had to rig the primary. Yeah, they in fucked him every time. Yeah. And they fucked him again in twenty twenty. And he's a pussy for not saying it. <gasps> Nah, he's pussy for that shit. Wow. I'm tight about that. You. Nah, because I liked him a lot. Yeah, I I liked him a lot because I thought he was actually trying to help, not win. Yeah. And all these motherfuckers just try to win, and I can tell it. You know, I I might not have my sense of smell, Joe, but I can fucking smell when a motherfucker is just out here for victory. Yeah. You know? Right. And I was like, nah, this guy really wants to win. If he gets in there, there'll be enough people in power that are like, yo, cut that shit out, bro. We're not doing this 70% tax nonsense. But he wasn't trying to do that. See, he explained on the show. See, there's a version of him that you get from the media that are trying to criticize him. Right. And then there's a version of him you get when you actually talk to him about his policies like i did right and when i talked to him for two hours or whatever the fuck it was he's saying that they're that that's not what they're trying to do what they're trying to do is put a tax on a very small tax less than one cent on On uh, exchanges on on speculation wall street speculation yeah and he's like that alone would would generate untold sums of money and pay for most of these programs he was about a lot of things that i was interested in here's one Student debt, that shit is ridiculous. Mm. The idea that you graduate from college and you owe two hundred thousand dollars and you're lucky you get a job that's forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And in Canada, you can get a free education. In England, right. you can you get a free education. A yeah. Why can't you get that here? Okay, yeah. uh, medicine. Uh, being able. Can I say to one go, thing about yeah. the education thing, which is so interesting to me? Like, it behooves a country that generates its income off taxation. To have an educated populace because then they will have higher paying jobs yes. and you get more yes. money. Yes. Like, yes. if you're the government, you should be yes. forcing everybody to get a fucking master's degree yes. so you can get more money. Yes. Okay, that's all I want to say. Yeah, it better, drives me crazy that people better don't Better educated society means less losers. Less losers, yeah. more income, yeah. more money that you get to tax yeah. them on. Uh, why would you create a situation where they would go out for lower paying jobs? The, that's not the problem. The problem is the government has been subsidizing education for so long, and that's the reason why these <laughs> institutions charge so much money in the first place. Because they know it's going to get paid off no matter what. Yes. And they could make up these bullshit majors like yes. fucking poetry. Is that student debt? Total federal student debt in the U.S. is one trillion mm-hmm. seven hundred and twenty two billion six hundred and sixty six million three hundred yeah, and it's, it's just going up. I like don't get crazy. into that debt stuff, bro. Oh, okay. Cause it's like it's not real. That's that's one point seven trillion dollars. But that's it's real. not real, bro. Like none of this oh, shit is real. Okay. Like okay, when, bro. when I was getting <laughs> you know, I got into these like consp- not conspiracy shit, but I was trying to understand like money a little bit during like corona because yeah. I was like, how do you just make three trillion dollars? That's crazy, right? Right. And like this guy broke it down to me, his name Joe Weisenthal, I think his name is. And he was like, debt is fine. Like the way our economy works is through debt in the way that like, you know, banks only need to keep 10% of the money in the bank. Mm -hmm. So like if a Chase bank over there has like, has lent out a hundred million dollars, it only needs 10 million in the bank. Right. Right. So if you only need 10% of the actual reserves, you get to make up 90% of money out of thin air. So you have $10 million in the bank, and then you come in, you go, I'd like a million dollars. And then they go, all right, cool, here's a million. They just push a button, you got a million. They only need to keep 100000 of your million in cash in the bank. They just made $900,000 with a push of a button. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? It's called fractional reserve banking. It's kind of a wild thing. But once I found that out, I'm like, oh, debt is just whatever. It's like... It's frivolous until the IRS comes, and then that shit's well, real. unless you owe the debt, and then it's real. So that's the difference between student loan debt. It's actual real money that kids owe when they get out of college, yes. and they're like, fuck, what is this? And then you're saddled yes. down for the rest of your life. Do you know there's people out there that are getting Social Security docked because they owe student loans? That's Because student loans are the only thing that you can't escape through bankruptcy? That's wild. You could escape everything else. You could buy businesses. Yeah. You could fuck up, buy a yacht, buy a house. They take it all away from you. You escape it. You don't. You don't owe it anymore. You run bankruptcy. Hmm. You're okay. You don't get that option with student loans. Isn't that interesting? Because you're in, you're in bed with the government now. Because the government has subsidized all that, and the government has made sure that they protected these institutions. So they can keep charging exorbitant amounts of money. Hmm. So they're like, 
since we're the one giving you social security, we're the government, we're going to take our cut first. We want our little pound of flesh, mm-hmm. that shit that you owe yeah. us, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you didn't pay back. Yeah. So you're an old guy. You're mm. at the end of the line. And your life didn't work out the way you wanted to, and you still have student debt. Well, guess yeah. what, fuck face? You got to pay, pay me. Back. Fuck you, pay me. Fuck you, <laughs> pay me. But, but I'm all old. I've worked in this factory my whole life. I never got a job with my degree. Yeah. Fuck you, pay me. Pay me. We'll take yeah. it out of your money. We're going to take it out of your check. Yeah. So you get like a $3,000 check every month? No, you don't. Yeah. You get a $2,000 check every month. So what do you say? Wipe it clean? Yeah, wipe it clean. It sounds crazy. And I don't why, even know how to do that. Why can you wipe it clean, though? Because it's fake. That's what I'm talking about, yes, Joe. It's not real. Listen, no one is ever going to really wipe it clean with with the powers that be and the way the the government is structured right now and the way the these banks and bankers have influence over politicians. They're never going to wipe it clean. This is just pipe dreams. But it's at least the option of making some schools free mm. and the option of giving people the opportunity to actually get an education free. And then also, you know, a lot of people have talked about absolving student loan debt. And I think Biden even talked about that at one point in time. It's not a bad idea if you want to keep the economy cracking. Um, tax breaks are also a good idea because people spend money <sighs> yeah. when they get tax breaks, they spend money. When they spend money, the economy gets juiced up. Yeah. That's those are the things that I was interested in with with Bernie Sanders. The 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 the, the uh, he he obviously didn't want the tax break part, right. but the thing with um, student loans, yeah. and then healthcare. The idea that we're supposed to be a country, yeah. right? Country is supposed to be a community. We're America. Okay. We're together. What, if people get sick and ill, we we're gonna spend our money to fix the streets. We're gonna spend <laughs> our money to repair bridges. Yeah, yeah, but we don't spend our money to make sure that our brothers and sisters are are able to get health care yeah. if they're ill or yeah. injured yeah. and then they're in insurmountable debt if that happens and they're fucked for the rest of their life because they broke their leg and they didn't have insurance mm. that's crazy that's what, crazy what All is the argument crazy. against it like what would be the uh i guess the conservative approach to uh health care well it's a, the free market approach is you want people to compete and you want them to get the most value for their education. And, you right. know, if a guy's a better surgeon, he should be able to generate more income than a guy, you know. like. And that would be limited in, in the case where there was a public uh, free health care. Or right. you could have people inside the public system and then you could have private options as well, like they do in Canada. In Canada, right. you have your public health care. So if you're a person who have, of a moderate income, you can't afford a private doctor to yep. do surgery on you. You could still get your surgery from a lot of very great surgeons. Right. But you also have the option to seek out an elite specialist. But a lot of people from Canada before COVID were coming down to the United States to get surgery because hmm. some of the best surgeons are here, which speaks to the power of the free market. Right. So you have to find a way to kind of like balance those yeah. two things. You got to find a way to balance it out. But yeah. health care in general should be a right. It should be a thing that we give people when we bring them into our culture Mm -hmm. and they contribute. You contribute taxes. Some of that taxes should go to health care. Okay, here's my question. If we contribute taxes and have universal tax pay health care, can we fat shame? We should because those people are mooching off the dime and and they're ruining it. They're ruining the – they're messing up the curve. Well, instead of fat shame, what they should do is like there should be some sort of education of the the negative aspects of being overweight, right? And and promote it heavily because you can't do that today. Because if you do, you'll be called a fat shamer, which is just nonsense. So that's the interesting thing. Like maybe the reason why we people have been able to get away with that is because we haven't been codependent enough. And maybe places where we are codependent, where this person being unhealthy actually affects my wallet. And not right. only affects my wallet, like, you could be taking my ventilator. Or, not my ventilator, but, like, my my, my granddad's ventilator or something like that, right? right? Like, you right. you are young. You yeah. shouldn't need a ventilator. Yeah. But you chose to eat all these things or not treat yourself right. And now you're taking away a hospital bed from someone who really fucking needs it. Right. Like, at what point, like, Corona really put that shit in perspective. But also, with the universal health care, I wonder if we could start having that conversation. And it's not looked at as, like, hateful. It's literally just looked at as, like... Hey, this is pretty reasonable. If we're all in this together, we need to start acting like it a little bit. You know when you're on a plane and then you're too heavy, so they say, yo, can you go to the other side? Yeah. You just do it, right? You don't go, no, I paid for seat 3B. 
You go, okay, right. I'll balance the fucking plane. What kind of planes are you on where they're telling you to move your seat? Uh, it's a, it's a little plane. It's a little plane to New York. <laughs> from New York. Okay. Shots Lizzo no. sparks body debate with 10 day smoothie diet. Yeah, let this girl lose the weight, oh, bro. Boy. Come on, man. Well, what is really the body debate? They got uh, mad at her for posting this. Because she's like, I'm, I'm, I love my body, but Hold now on, she's I trying to lose them. weight. What are you saying? They got mad at her for talking. Like, she posted photos that she was on a diet. So people got mad at her. They got mad at her for trying to lose weight? Yes. Oh, my God. They got mad at Adele for losing weight. But that's just fat, sloppy people that don't want anybody else to work hard. There's a lot of people that are like, I like being fat and sloppy. And she's fat and sloppy. You were my fat, sloppy hero. And now you're trying to get healthy? Fuck you, bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they get angry and they eat more cake. They're angry. They're eating hoagies and fucking chips and fries. Can't believe her with her bullshit diet. She's hurting my feelings. Yeah. Yeah, BPC one five seven lift weights. Get to that gym, <laughs> pussies. Oof. Oof. It is diet, crazy. Diet Lizzo culture. slams critics who say she's promoting diet culture. Hilarious. <laughs> diet, diet culture. culture. Oh, How you're promoting that? health culture. I'm a big girl who did a smoothie detox. Every big girl should do whatever they want with their bodies. How about every person? Yo, you know what's crazy is like she's trying to lose weight. She's trying to lose weight, but like she, this is where she fucked up. She branded herself as the fat girl, and now you realize that that's unhealthy. Well, she leaned into it. Big she was time. getting a lot of love for being a fat girl, big time. Yeah, and that's why you need to be careful. Like yeah. that's the thing people do all the time is like they just ride the wave. Like they see a wave coming up and they just jump on that shit, yeah. and then they get all this support and they think the support is for them, but it's really just the wave. Right, you guys agree on the same thing, and the yes. woke thing is the same thing, and the extreme yep. right right wing is the same thing. It's yep. like these these characters hop on, they latch on, they yep. leech, and they think they're celebs, mm-hmm. and then they divert a little bit from that wave. And the fucking rocks, Garcetti, the they outside your right house, there. boom, yeah. It's Isn't true. that interesting? Yeah. It's like you create your own thing. It takes longer to get there. But at least the people that fuck with you understand that you are on your own path. Yeah. And they have to make a choice to opt in to what you're doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? There's a look that Garcetti has all the time. Like he's on the strongest antidepressants imaginable. <laughs> was, you know, there's a look in his eyes like. Those pupils? This yeah. look. <laughs> there's a look in his eyes like yeah. there's no, there's, there's no yeah. one's there. You're happy to not he's be not out really there. Anymore, huh? He's, oh, I love it. It's like a, he's, his eyeballs are like remotely broadcast into his head. They're not really there. It's like, it's like the, a Zoom call. The Incredibles 2. Yeah, it's like something's not right. Yeah. You look at his face, he's just got this. Like, no matter what has happened, fucking LA's on fire. The Doesn't matter. has to end. Look at that guy. Yeah. What Bro, a he's, dope. He's such a dope. Yeah. The, the fact that this fucking guy made it to the mayor of one of the largest cities, if not the largest city in the fucking country, is crazy. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a. It's crazy. It's crazy. But who the fuck wants that job now? When you find out that BLM is going to be knocking on his door every day for 22 days in a row. I just don't understand. Protesting. And you have to live in the mayor's mansion, which is hilarious. So everybody knows where you are. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The governor lives in the governor's mansion, too. You have to? Yes. What if you just job. don't want to live there? No, that's the job. I asked Governor Abbott when I was chilling with the governor of Texas. You are moving and grooving, baby. I was baby. chilling with the governor of Texas. He <laughs> took me to, to his uh, governor's mansion. Gave me a tour of it. It's really cool. They got old shit there from like the original governors, like, uh-huh. you, you, like historical stuff. They have yeah. books that tell you what all the different things are on the walls and this guy's pipe and that guy's fucking chair and this mm-hmm. guy's cane and everybody leaves behind something when they when they leave office. That's sick. But you have to live there. Everybody knows where you live. So you're the governor? Okay, good. I want you in that he's, house. He's in a wheelchair, that governor, right? Yes. Did they make it wheelchair accessible for yes. him? Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was wheelchair accessible originally, but it right. is wheelchair accessible. Yo, that's a power move right there, bro. To change things? To, yeah, to be ramps. in a wheelchair and be like, no, nah, I'm still uh, going to do this shit. Well, he was in a wheelchair when he was 24. He was running and he got hit with a tree. A tree fell? A tree fell and hit him when he was running. Unbelievable Crazy. bad luck. Crazy bad luck. Unbelievable. Shattered his spine. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, just imagine like... The things that have could, could have gone different in his day for that to not happen. Mm-hmm. If he stayed one more second brushing his teeth, you know, yep. like one second. Yep. And he would have missed that tree. Yep. Or the tree would have missed him rather. Yep. Or left. Oh, my. Five seconds earlier running. Ready? Go. Hold on. Now go. Did you ever ask him about that? No. You don't want to give someone a like, have you ever thought. He's thought how about much it. better your life. Yeah. Well, of course. Can he still? Can he still? 
Go to town know. or whatever. I don't know. Because Stephen Hawking was piping broads. That's what I heard. Yeah, got one pregs. Really? I think he got one pregs. I think well, he was you know, cheating he on this girl. He liked to go to strip clubs. That's that's a that's a fucking legend right there's there. A, dude. There's a bunch of pictures of Stephen Hawking. Uh, Eric Weinstein told me about that. Really? Yeah. He's How's gonna Eric? Me about that. He's great. <laughs> remember when I, I remember you it? were fucking with him in the Comedy Store. It was so funny. Because dudes who are not you. used to being around comics, it's so funny when a comics around when a comic starts jabbing at him, fuck with him. You, you see him like what? What? What's, what's happening? He's a nice He's guy. He's gotten but, used to it now. I just no, because what happened was like I think I was busting his balls on uh, the fighter and the kid. And mm-hmm. then he DM'd me, and he said something in the DMs like, "I must have run over your cat," or something like that. Like, <laughs> said some like corny ass shit, right? And I was like, "But like, I guess a lot you of people." Run over your cat. But I, I don't know. Maybe they're not used to like you know when you see someone in person, then the same energy is kept. Like, yeah. if I make fun of you on a podcast, like I will say that to your face. Yes. And the people that I won't, I'm not gonna make fun of on a podcast. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's supposed to be fun. Is is fun if I'm both right. of your balls? So he goes when you're there. He's like, "Oh, this is my friend Eric." And I was like, "Oh yeah, you tweeted me that thing about me <laughs> running over your cat, or you run over my cat." And then he was like, "Nah, uh, nah, I don't know what you're talking about." I don't know. I'll show you the DM. Uh, yeah. I brought out the phone. <laughs> I brought out the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, that dude is too smart for his own good. Really? Oh my god! He when he talks about physics and he, he goes down these wormholes and starts yeah. talking about things and ex- explaining geometric patterns and stuff to us. Right? He, Do you ever think he's just making that shit up? No, he's not making it up, dude. He is a legitimate super genius. Really? Yeah, yeah. I trust his opinion on almost everything. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a very, very, very smart man. All right, I'm gonna check him so out. His a brother bit. is as well. Those, they're, they have whatever the fuck's going on in their genetics. Mm. Someone in their family is smart as fuck. Yeah. They're, they're both exceptional brains. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, what do they do for a living? Well, Eric is a mathematician, and his brother is an evolutionary biologist. But, like, what does that mean professor. if you're a mathematician? You teach people math? Or well, like... he uh, works for Teal Capital, Peter Teal. That's company. what I was making fun of him yeah. for. And I was like, like yeah, oh. you just got to say what Peter Thiel wants you to say. <laughs> you fucking, that's the, that's the r- big dick. Yo, that motherfucker does uh, not play around. Peter, Peter mm-hmm. Teal, is that how you pronounce the last name? Yeah. Feel yeah. or Teal? Teal. That dude, that's big swinging dangalang right there, bro. <laughs> that guy, hey, man. He's hey. a nice guy, too. I'm just saying, like, that's the difference between politicians and big swinging dangalang. Yeah. Politicians talk all that shit. That motherfucker waited. Peter Thiel had a party at his house, mm-hmm. and he brought over the guy who wrote Chariots of the Gods. What is oh, the, the uh, guy's name? The, the German fellow. Oh no, I don't know. I, I'm thinking something. Eric else. Von Daniken. That's okay. right. He brought over Eric Von Daniken and invited me over as well. And he they made invited, him read so we it all to have you. this. No, we all had like a, a di- like a lunch yeah. around the table. Like he yeah. has these like power dinners yeah. and power lunches. That's, They're really cool. Let's where go. He brings over interesting people and everyone has conversations. That's the dream. I went to one of the dinners at his house and then I went to one of the lunches at his house and he brought over Eric Von Daniken and the guy was asking. We were all asking him questions about the uh about his theories about yeah. ancient aliens and what he think <sighs> he's a believer meaning that it's not necessarily based on realistic interpretations of this ancient shit like yeah. his version of the uh the the plaque at palenque that shows it looks like it shows a guy in a rocket ship taking yeah. off into heaven but someone who is a, a mayan scholar then explained to me that the imagery that is on display in that is is that iconography of the flames below them and all that that's all been explained in multiple texts and that this this type of imagery mm. exists all throughout Mayan culture and it doesn't have anything to do with space travel mm. it has to do with like the underworld and I, I, I legitimately forget exactly what he told to me but I remember doing a, a, a short dive into it going okay I kind of I kind of see why someone would if they didn't understand the uh, Mayan language and these Mayan yep. hieroglyphs they would look at it that way when I, I I saw those pyramids, so those are the ones in like Teotihuacan or whatever like that, yeah. like right outside Mexico City. How do you City. say that? Teotihuacan. Teot- yeah, I'm not exactly. But um, it was uh, it was really cool. No, to see. that's not Mexico City. That, is that Palenque is outside of Mexico City? I don't I don't Maybe. know. One is outside right. Mexico City. Yeah, this, there's there's a lot of them. The our guide said that they were just trying to mimic mountains, and mm. that if you look at them, uh, 
with the mountain range in the background, they actually are situated in the same way that the mountains. Oh, you mean the are. actual pyramids? Yeah, themselves. the actual pyramids yeah. themselves. And like, th- so they didn't look at them as pyramids. They're like, no, we just made mountains because mountains were the sickest shit back in the day. So we just started to make them as well. There's a lot of interpretations of why they did what they did. The problem is we don't really know because they're dead. You want them they, aliens? They disappeared. Bro. No, you, I don't think it is aliens. No, but you want them. Oh, I want aliens right you now. You want aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No and doubt. And you're telling me you haven't used any of your influence to see if there's aliens, Joe? Dude, I have people on almost every month that either have seen UFOs or no. I'm getting Travis Walton. You need the guy to get. got a fire in the sky. We're working on getting him. You need to get the real. You need to get, I need the get real Trump deal. right after he gets out of Trump. office. And you need give that him Trump ecstasy. Sit down here. Get him some MDMA <laughs> and have dude. him tell the truth. <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> just Did have you... him sit here and just tell the truth. I just. Always wanted people to love me, and I felt like the only way they did is if they were scared. And so I acted like a bully, like a bully, like I guess I was a bully. I didn't want to be a bully, but I felt like that was the only way they would listen. And I eventually wanted to not be a bully, but I never could get away with it. And I just kept getting away from it. I just kept doing deals and kept... And then one day I realized I'm 74 and I'm still doing the same thing, but now I'm president. And I just don't... What do I do now? I mean, I have to say that I won, even though I, I'm pretty sure I lost. And I don't know what the fuck to do. Introspective to do. Trump. Introspective, be so high great. on on ecstasy, sitting yeah. on a couch with a bunch of fucking like Persian rugs and shit, like <laughs> some hippie compound. Just Burning Man Trump. Yeah, Burning Man Trump. That's what you need. <laughs> some just crisscross applesauce in some North Hollywood apartment. Yes. Just trying to figure out his life, tripping balls. It'd be cool to see some aliens, bro. A hundred percent. Like you, to see that. Yeah. You think you think your boy Elon is going to Mars and like it's. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Occupy Mars. But do you think that he's not going? He's going to send some dummy up there. Oh, he's going around too. He's staying here. Yeah, he's never going. So just no interest in seeing what you've created. Uh uh-uh. uh People die up there. I think he's going, bro. <laughs> he might go. I think he's going. He dude. might go. He might go. Look, if they can develop some sort of an incredible city in on Mars. Yeah. And he's still alive. Like yeah. when he's eighty, they might yeah. fucking shoot him up there. Yeah, he he's might gone. live out the last days of his life. Wouldn't you? If no. you built a fucking city on Mars? No, because it's still on Mars. It's like a shit neighborhood. Yeah. Elon Musk says SpaceX first Starship trip to Mars could fly in four years. It could. You know what else could happen? You could grow a new dick. That could happen. Could Who you, knows? though? Yeah, you have stem cells. Is that how stem um, cells work? But no, for real. It, it, they might be able to send something to Mars in four years, but they keep saying that. Oh, he referred to the launch opportunity. That arises every 26 months. See, when uh, people do Mars shit is like closest. that, yeah, yeah that's gotcha. gross when they do things like that in the title. Like, what? In four yeah. years, he's going to put people on Mars? It's not what he said, bitch. He was referring to the opportunity to launch. It's yeah. not, it doesn't mean it's going to be ready. Yeah. It's an interesting time for space travel because the private sector has gotten involved. Jeff yeah. Bezos with all that cheddar. Yeah. You see his wife giving away all that money? Yeah, she gave away ex- like four billies. Yeah. She didn't know what to do with it. It all came for free. Uh, no, nah, she worked for that shit, she bro. She did, right? No, she worked for she that. She worked. I mean, look at that guy. How much do you think she got? What's the total? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, it seems egregious, right? There should be a cap for divorce money. <laughs> don't you think? What is the cap? A billion? I think a billion a is fine. Girls are complaining. Fuck that. That's bullshit. Girls look at divorce settlements like it's their team. It's like the fucking Sixers should have got that point. That ref is a fucking asshole. It was rigged. It was rigged. You know what I mean? They do. They look at it like it's a team game. Bro, and then every time a dude comes up in a divorce, like I think Kelly Clarkson's. Yes, uh, we were talking about that. What, what girls got? girls hate it. Why does he want that money? Get your own money. Get your money, King. Go, Get go your earn money. your money. Yeah, like, I don't know. off a man. She got, uh, when they divorced earlier this year uh-huh. in June, uh, it says the settlement was $38 billion. Huh. However, yeah. huh. by December 2020, Net worth estimated up to sixty two billion. Because of stock, stock. options? I mean that's it's all in yes. stock. Because he doesn't have yet. any actual money. It's like all oh, Amazon stock, yeah. And it's gone up so much. Sixty two. So she gave away three. She's like, What is this fucking pittance? Nothing. Be gone. I give away three and I feel good about myself. I show up at cocktail parties and let everybody She's away know. Six billion this year according to this. Six billion. That wow. ain't shit for her. She's got another fifty four in the bank. Wow. But still low key. That's that's kind of dope. That's kind of dope. Give away four billion. She needs to get herself a man. Like you don't think she's getting fucking crazy super athlete man that's just 
Oh yeah. You don't think that happened Wait, immediately? Home the pipe. Yeah. No, it's hard to get a man for money. Women, you can get for money. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get a man for money. Yeah. You know, women are accustomed. It's like there's a certain kind of woman. Yeah. That will gravitate towards a wealthy, disgusting man. Right. There's very, it's very rare the other way. She redefines fuck you money. L-O-L. But it's funny that she didn't earn it. You know, all the richest women of the world. That's uh, how they got all their money. Yeah, divorce. Except for that Elizabeth Holmes lady for a brief shining moment. She was our girl. What's she was that? the woman that ran Theranos, which is a, it was a fraudulent uh, blood um, testing company no. that uh, put thousands of people at risk because <laughs> they, they didn't really test their blood. Right. This, this company called Theranos, she dressed like Steve Jobs, used a fake voice. You don't know about her? No. Bro, she's amazing. She is... The literally greatest con the man poster ever. Poster girl yeah. for what is wrong with rooting for a gender, because they wanted so badly. Ah, they wanted so badly to have to their own female. genius. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. genius copied Steve Jobs, dressed like him, right, and talked like this. She talked in a deep voice, but it was a fake voice. She's kind That's of a how piece, she dressed though, everywhere. a little bit. Yeah, she's a little, if you like, crazy. for like a tech genius. Yeah. But she's not a tech genius. Oh, she she left college when she was nineteen. So did all started of them, this though. company. Yeah, but she, it's all fake, dude. Yeah, she was full of shit. Yeah, it was all fake. But There's, nobody questioned it because they were scared well, of being sexist. People in the company were questioning it, and then it eventually all fell apart. Yeah. And now she's in trial. Now she's fucked, and the, you know she's going to trial, and she's trying yeah. to use mental health as a come defense on, in the come trial. On, and, come on. That's but like that clock boy. At shit. one point in time, she was worth nine billion dollars. Oh, cash out for a babe. brief moment. Just get out for a brief moment. She should have taken, put all the chips on the table, and just flew to Bali, <laughs> and just bought herself a palace on the top of a jungle somewhere, and <clears throat> just partied where there's where they can't send you home, <laughs> where there's no extradition. But she's fucked now, man. Twelve felony fraud charges. Yikes. There is a great podcast. Um, I think it's called The Dropout. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who put it together. Is it a Wandry podcast? It might be Wandry. I fucking love them. Mm. Th those. Is it them? ABC. Mm. It's the dropout. It's fucking incredible, dude. Oh, and it just goes into detail about how nuts it is. She was banging her business partner. They would show up and work together and pretend they lived in different places where they were living together. And they were, and he was his name was Sonny, this Indian cat. He he drove around in a fucking Lamborghini. Let's so go. he would show up and they were just bullshitting. They they had like fake blood testing machines and people would try them. They go, oh, the machine's not working. We're just going to do you the regular way. And they wound up doing so many people the regular way because the machines didn't work. And Walgreens bought into them or Walmart, Walgreens, Walgreens, Walgreens bought into them and ordered like thousands of machines. They, they hustled a lot of people. But one of the reasons why they hustled all these people is because people wanted to believe this narrative yeah. that there was this woman genius yeah. who set up this company. She's out there kicking ass. I got skeptical for a very interesting reason. Okay. This is how I got it. This is long before she got called out for it. She did this speech at this like women's empowerment thing. Yeah. And she was talking. I was like, that girl sounds like an idiot. I was like, this does not sound like something that a genius says. Yeah. Like, whatever you think about, you know, name your tech genius, whatever, which, whichever one. When they speak about things... They have an understanding of what they're talking about yeah. that shows that there's like some fucking high horsepower intelligence yeah, yeah. behind them. She had none Nothing. of that. Yeah. She was talking. It's like, I just think it's so amazing. And I just want to like tell girls that like you should go for it and like you can make. I'm like, oh my God, that bitch is an idiot. I was like, watch this. I was like, what is happening here? And then. I saw a fraud chart and I just started diving down the rabbit hole. I got really interested in it just because sometimes you just smell <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. And I saw this speech and the speech, they weren't calling bullshit on the speech at all. People were saying, look, Elizabeth Holmes is amazing. She made $9 billion and she gave this speech. So I was like, oh, let's see the speech. I like, I like inspirational speeches. I like people that are, are winners. I saw that speech. I was like, not her. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. uh -uh. I'm not buying it. See if yeah. you can find that. I, there's, I'm, I mean, I have one that says inspirational speech, uh, but there's another one that says her TED Talk. Yo, no, it wasn't shorter. a TED Talk. And there's one video she was says, speaking for like some women's conference. Did she and it's like, girls are amazing. It's like, what you're doing, girls, is like so kick ass. I was like, this girl's an idiot. She's not a genius. She's not right. a tech genius. Right. Because we talked 
male, female, whatever. You yeah. talk to those tech geniuses, they have a way of communicating. You go, oh, oh there's, there's some fireworks going yep. off in that brain. Let me see if this is it. Let me hear this. Signs and symptoms. Give me some. Uh. But diseases often begin so much earlier. That's her voice? No, it's a fake voice she uses. First appear. And any person who's gone She's through the using a fake voice. Of losing so she's speaking love, deeper. She's doing this yeah. on purpose. They find out too late in the disease progression process that they're really sick knows that nothing matters more than being able to change that. And the, the voice comes Yet and goes sometimes too. In our country today is the leading cause of bankruptcy. I think one of the things that sold her out was like people she went to school with was like, that bitch does not talk like that. Like, what happened? Did you just smoke a million cigars every day? <laughs> um, that's not the speech. There was a speech at some woman's thing. It's like some theme. It's not her TED talk either. It's like she's speaking. It, so she's accepting some award at some women's thing. She's like, I just want to say girls are out there. If, do yeah. you remember when Ghislaine Maxwell was speaking at her like TEDx or whatever? No. Oh, it's crazy. She did? Dude, it's amazing. amazing. She's talking we'll about like being a submarine captain or something like that. And she's she like, that up? we're going to make the oceans a country. Oh, Dude, yeah, but it's so obvious that she's like full of absolute dog shit as she's talking. It's amazing to watch someone bullshit other human beings, like <laughs> just lie to their faces. Did you find the Elizabeth Holmes one? Okay. I can't believe I never heard about this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an amazing story. It's going on right now. The trial is about to start. So she goes to jail, right? Like this is no brainer. You go to jail for something. Oh, like she's this. going to jail for a long time. Wow. She fucked over a lot of very like Betsy DeVos. Uh, I believe she gave a hundred million dollars. No. Yeah, in yeah. A lot of like Monday she. Nast, I, I am here so it is. incredibly this is it. humbled and. She looks like so Nikki Glaser. To be with this incredible group of women. I want to just take a minute to say, especially to the young women in the room here, do everything you can to be the best in science and math and engineering. It's our actions that will determine this new stereotype around women being the best in science and technology and engineering, and it's that that our little girls will see when they start to think yeah. about Yeah, hit the brakes. I saw that, I was like, that's an idiot. Like, be the best? You're just gonna be the best because you're a girl? You're gonna be a girl and be, how about do your best? Like, what are you talking about, be the best? <laughs> yeah, be yeah, the yeah. best, uh, you mean against other men <laughs> yeah, yeah. that have been dominating the field and winning Nobel prizes for centuries? Like, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, girls, just like so important that you be the best in math. And I'm like, that's an idiot. Like, that's not a genius, that's an idiot. You know what's interesting is like, we, we always put this pressure on women to be, like, better at, like, math and, like, science. Yeah. But, like, we don't like guys that are good at that. <laughs> like, well, they're just, nerds. The like, we make is, fun of the guys. But the thing is, there's not a lot of women that excel in those areas. Because so they don't have we to. put pressure. But, no, it's not it. It's, they, it's not. That's not what it is. What it is is that women generally, and this is a generalization, right? right. There's women MMA fighters, right? Yeah. There's, there's women scientists. Women generally don't gravitate towards those fields. Yeah. That's all it is. But why they would you? But they don't find it interesting. Well, why would men? Some men do. Well, they, they don't have a choice. They're alone. <laughs> right? Like, to find, me, alone, alone. find me the guy that, like, with all the friends that's like, you know what? I'm going to be an applied physicist. Uh, find me the guy that like is going to play yeah. pickup basketball every single day after school that's good like point. you know what I'm going to dedicate my life to astrology that's a good point but like, there's some you girls spoke to that Elon, are lonely too you were here with them yeah tough guy to talk to I, I have an easy time talking to him bro I like talking to him brilliant he's right there no I'm telling you absolutely you him, brilliant you could talk to him really yeah 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 okay he's, he's got like a rhythm no, thing no he's uh, like remarkably... could you watch the fight with him oh yeah really he's so he remarkably can... accessible okay he's Fair very enough. very normal when you're interesting around him. obviously ridiculously smart but yes. very normal to be around no question whether they're smart i'm just saying like sometimes these folks are often kind of like loners so they have to go into that thing and they find it's not out even just that it's not even that this for whatever reason there's certain people mm -hmm. that are males that have a, a propensity towards those things whether it's science or engineering or those technology disciplines right and less women are interested in them 
And yeah. so women look at it and go, oh, there must be some sort of systemic oppression mm. that keeps women from rising to the yeah, top. Yeah, I don't believe in that But it's part not. For it's sciences, women. Yeah. I, I don't know if there is any oppression, but that's not what the problem is. The problem is less women are interested in those fields. Yeah. Same thing with comedy, right? It's yeah. just like if 1% of the total amount of people are going to be successful at it, right? Yeah. And 90% of the comics are male. And it's 10%, not that women are getting suppressed. It, exactly. It's right. more just like there's so many more dudes that do this. Yes. So nine out of the 10 are going to happen to be guys just because that's how the numbers are going to work and out. And what Hitchens talked about, that right. women generally don't use humor as a, like a social tool. Mm. It's not a thing that they use to try to get men to like them, like men use to try you to know get what, women to like You know what's like interesting, us. though? With social media has kind of changed that in that like there's currency to being funny now. Yes. As a girl specifically, like my girl will share all these like it'll be like Instagram videos or like TikToks or these kind of things with me. And they are female centric humor tapping to things that women really find funny. They can be little things that are just silly, like a girl impersonating her boyfriend in the house and, or her husband in the house. And it's just like a really quick video of like him opening up every cupboard and drawer and just leaving it open. And like that's how I walk around. My me too. Th exactly. And yeah. I laughed. I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Like that's yeah. what I, my girl dies laughing because she sees it. And I'm like, oh, this is a new thing. Yeah. Now that there is like currency and value attached to being funny as a girl, you can get followers and you can get all these sponsorships and everything like that. I think a lot of girls that are really good at it are starting to get. Not only starting to get, but lean into it, mm -hmm. and in a way that maybe they hadn't in the past because they're like, well, there's no. What am I going to get out of just being like the funny girl? Well, also, does that make sense? The yes. point I make. Well, think about this way: they're also doing this for other girls, so they have their yes. audience, just like they would talk to their friends. Yeah. But instead of having to go on stage, right. in front of a group of fucking idiot dudes, right. they're not going to get it and <laughs> right. going to be aggressive. They, yeah, they have like a, for lack of a better word, a safe space, yes. but like a supportive environment for the comedy that they want to do. It's almost like when like the nerd comics started doing the shows inside the comic book stores. Yes, it's like they finally had a place where like all their references, that right. all them and their friends found hilarious were exactly. definitely going to work they created their own scene it's just interesting how that shit works out like it is you see these girls and like they're going to get huge followings and they're literally trying to be funny they're not trying to be slutty they're not like doing injections all over their fucking face and all the filters they're going for laughs right and girls are gravitating to it and it might be completely outside of our like sphere of comedy like you and i it might not hit us but they're going to be famous and successful. Right. And I wonder if another generation of chicks are coming up seeing that going, oh, I might not be the hottest chick, but like I can get a lot of value and, and have like a career if I lean into this like funny side that I always kind of suppress because I thought like dudes weren't into it. I'd be I'd be really I'd be really curious to see what happens in the next like 10, 15 years. I think years. there's definitely going to be some that rise up. You know, there's going to be probably more women that are interested in doing that than interested in doing stand up because you don't yeah. have to. Go in front of a crowd. Stand up's painful, bro. It's, it's not for everybody, dog. It's brutal. Like, it's not fighting. I hate when people make that fucking metaphor where they're just like, comedy. It's just like boxing. It's just like, no. I've done both. It's nothing is yeah. like that. Like, it is totally different. But in that, like, you are su like subjecting yourself to this like crippling pain potentially. Yeah. It takes an odd individual to do that. Yeah. And it's really not for everybody. And men in comedy don't root for other men in comedy. Like, guys in comedy need to stick together. And guys in comedy need to defend ourselves against all these asshole women that talk all this horrible misandry about male life and men behaviors. God. Women women stand up for other women in that regard. That's what's so whack about that video. And she's like, you know, girls, you need to concentrate on being the best. Girls should be the best at math, the best at science. Like that is such stupid. The way she's saying it is such a stupid, simplistic, fake interpretation. Right. Like she doesn't have any connection to those words. Yeah. She's just saying these dumb things yeah. that she thinks you're supposed to say to get an applause. Girls, just yeah. try to be the best. You're gonna be the best at science, the yeah. best at yeah. math. Oh, the best, the best. What, what, you know what you're asking? Yeah. You're asking these girls to surpass these yeah. fucking super eggheads that Virgins! are barely human. They've got no pussy yeah. ever. Ever. Do you, there's no way. That's and they're, an interesting. They're, they're barely human. They're, yeah. they're the top of the food chain scientists. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are, they're, they're probably a lot of them are spectrum-y. Yes. And fucking full-on geniuses at a yeah. scope that... Morons like you and I yeah. could never really we, we don't even yeah. understand what kind of person that is. Yeah. It's like the next level of person. Is it the next level though, dude? Or is it like Well, if you want new shit, 
if you want technology. Okay, yeah. I guess innovation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I, we, yes, I want innovation. I want technology, but I don't want communication and like socialization to be that. So it's a tricky it's, thing. It's like I want the good things that you guys are providing, but I don't want dinner in that way. Does that make sense? Like I, I still like busting balls. I still yes, like this hang. I like just talking course. about ideas. But you're you're not them. You're you're look. They can't do what you do, and you can't do what they do. We need all kinds of people. That's right. As long as we're not all gravitating that yes. way. Yeah, we need the whole fucking spectrum. Let's keep them. They do yeah. their thing. We need it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come up with the smart shit. We make it funny, mm -hmm. right? And communicate it to the world. Well, people then, who are like generally intelligent, they they enjoy like humor that they don't come up with too. They probably enjoy your kind of shit because yeah. they don't think that way. Yes, a bra you're you're f the <laughs> the fucking punchlines. One of the things that you figured out how to do, which is brilliant in this uh, this pandemic time, hmm. is the way you do your videos. The punchlines come so fast. There's <laughs> yeah. so many of them, and this is why it's important. It's the opposite of these Zoom standups because the Zoom standup, it's like you're playing it out like you're in a theater yeah. with two thousand people. So you got these pauses that don't make any sense yeah. when there's no one in the room. You get it. Yeah. I'm shocked that people didn't get this, but like I would watch the guys doing the monologues, like the late night guys, and like see them wait for laughs on jokes where nobody's there. Right, because they're they're doing them from their house. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, do you not realize that this is a conversation and yeah. you're being like really awkward in this conversation? Super awkward. You're waiting for reaction that someone at home is not giving you. Yeah. So I was like, in order for us to do jokes. You've seen my stand-up. I don't go close to as fast. I right. milk silence. I yeah. love that tension, yeah. you know? But on this, I was like, I can't wait for punchlines. Yes. So when we're putting these things together, we're writing these jokes, and then we would, I literally would make sure at the end of every punchline, there's the beginning of something else. Mm. Even if, like, sometimes I'll say, I'll just give away, like, every time I come out here, I give away all my tricks. But uh, I'll say now at the end of a line. The punchline could be uh, inflatable fuck doll. Now. Now is yeah. going to cover the gap. Yes. Because now lets you know at home, I'm not waiting for you to laugh. If you want right. to laugh, that's cool. If right. not, that's great. Everything's fine. Yeah. But just finding a way. I got to give credit to my, my team, man. You met the guys that came in here. Mark, Mark Gagnon. He co-created with me and he wrote it with me. Robbie Slovic wrote it with me. And Effa Ill guy. Uh, another guy, we wrote it together. And then Alex Media is my video guy. He pr he produced it. He directed the Shout whole thing. Shout out to all those dudes. And uh, they're all COVID free. Yeah. Now, yeah, we all got is it, this though. Your, uh, what is this? A trailer. Oh, oh this is a trailer. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So shit, but yeah. the show comes out tomorrow, which is the day that this comes out. Right? Yeah, so now it's out yeah. as this thing is out. Yeah, yeah. as this thing is out. It's yeah. out. And uh, yeah. it's all streaming on Netflix. How many episodes did you do? Four episodes. Each one is 15 minutes, and it's uh, coronavirus, conspiracy theories, Black Lives Matter, and then uh, like a nation divided, like political division. How much time does it take from getting the concept of what the theme is going to be to mm -hmm. finishing a video? This thing took, uh, I've never worked longer or harder on anything in my entire life. It uh, literally almost broke me. Three months of, I didn't see anybody. The last month was 100 hours a week minimum. Whoa. The last two weeks was two hours of sleep. Jesus Christ. For four videos that are 15 minutes long each. It's because, I mean, you know the joke density, dude? Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's so... And they're like... Terry Shivo jokes, Bro. like you, 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 you have like so obscure and interesting, and that's half the fun of it is you, laughing yeah, at these references. That's the thing. Like I'm, I'm. It's for yeah. There's just a lot of like some people are gonna get the joke. I don't think everybody could possibly get every joke. The pictures all have jokes. Like, did you notice you in the pictures? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The text messages, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like they're, they're on little things. Like, did you watch at, to the end of the credits? Yes. Did yes. you see that? Yeah, that okay. was great too. So there's like all this little yeah, shit. Yeah, you did like, a lot of cool shit to it. We try yeah. to have like some fun in it, but like, I mean, like all the little pictures are so little nuanced and like they're mm -hmm. jokes that nobody will catch that we just put in in the pictures. Right. Like Bobby Lee is in a picture. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Was like, it Wendy Cummings with a horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like we do a whole picture pass, but it's just these guys it's, dedicate their fucking life to so it, man. It's so good. It's so good. It's such yeah. a funny show. And it's so popular. Like my friends that uh, aren't in comedy, when I started posting them on my Instagram feed, yeah. they're like, who is this fucking guy? Like, God damn, these are so good. Yeah. Thank you for doing that, man. 
man. stand up. Oh, dude, my pleasure. Listen. You're great at that. I you like am, to spread the love, man. I am so into spreading the love, and I'm so into um, promoting people that hustle. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It makes me excited. I see what you're doing, and I, I'm just like, I, everybody that's complaining, shut the fuck up. Go for Look it. Look what right? he did. Yeah. Look yeah. what he did. Yeah. He just just fucking put his nose to the grindstone and went yeah. to work. Yeah. And there's so many people out there woeing the lack of this and that and yeah. they just they can't get off the couch. They can't get yeah. moving. Yeah. And I'm like, look, that's on you. It, that's it, on it really you. Is. If you want to make it, You'll do you want to make it? Look, you went the complete unconventional path. You put your fucking special on YouTube yeah. when they all said no. Yeah. It blew the fuck up. Yeah. And then you put a crowd work special on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. That blew the fuck up. Yeah. And then COVID hits, yeah. stops you in your track. Uh uh. You went eh, left yeah. turn yeah. around the barrier yeah. with a whole nother level. Yeah, a whole nother level of shit. And again, you are the very best at capitalizing on this weird time and creating comedy that's specifically perfectly designed for like Instagram and YouTube and these 15 minute chunks. Thank you, man. It's fucking great, man. Yeah, I just wanted to, I don't know. Like, you I, killed it. Thank you, You killed man. it. I'm glad you liked it. That I made, love it. Yeah, we were, we worked hard on it, man. And I, all the credit to the guys as well. Like they gave up everything. Like we all have like wives and shit, you know, and like fiances. And it's like none of them saw their wives and stuff for like fucking months, you know. Yeah. And it's just like, and I, I, I just, I'm just stoked about it. I'm glad you liked it. And like, yeah, I don't know. I just like trying different shit, man. I, How long can you do that for? It seems like. I, ca I couldn't keep that pace up. Like a lot of things. We, had to change. we were only four guys, right? Right. One of the guys, my boy Efe, is just a buddy of mine. So do you know all these guys before you got involved in this? Mark, right? Who's going to be a superstar. He's fucking brilliant. He works so hard at this and he's, he's amazing. Uh, he, a year ago, was started as my intern and he was helping us and he was opening up for me on the road. He literally graduated college, didn't even go to his graduation so he could meet us in like Cleveland or something and do a gig. And, but I saw he was like sharp and competent. That's the number one thing I look for is competence. Right. Alex, who's fucking a genius, but the guy is so competent. He, he's the guy who does all my production stuff. Like he shoots all the videos. He shot the specials and everything like that. When we started working together, he had no fucking clue how to edit. The guy learned Premiere eight days before he edited the Netflix special. <laughs> bro, do you know, like, I'm telling you, bro, and literally, I, I would tell him as we're writing and going up, I'd be like, bro, do you want me to get you like a class or something like that? And he'd be like, nah, it's like the same thing. You know what I mean? That's and then I noticed he was pulling a lot of late nights. And every time I'd go in the room, like one of the screens would have the special. The other screen would have a YouTube Tutorial. screen up, and it would just be like, how to insert text. And a, da, da, like, he's just learning on YouTube how to put together the special, That's right? That's amazing. But it's competence, bro. It, like, these yeah. guys, they're so competent. And I was like, okay, you guys can learn anything. Some, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people, like, look for, like, intelligence in really, like, specific ways. Yeah. And in my life, it's always like, if I have somebody who can conquer and solve problems, we can give them any problems. Right. And... They were just amazing at that. And then this Robbie Slovic is a comic in New York. And I always thought he was funny. And I went to his album taping at New York Comedy Club. I remember this. And I remember sitting there and I was like, wow, this guy is really sharp and has a great take on every topical thing. I go, I'm thinking, I'm like, wow, this guy's really good. One, I'm going to do something with this guy. I'm going to bring him on one of these days. And I was trying to do another thing with him and his wife. And then this came up and I was like, let's see if Robbie can help out. And then F.A.'s never done comedy in his fucking life. The guy works in like, I don't want to blow up his job, but he's from London. Do you know what I mean? He's never done. And he's just like a really smart guy and like thorough and intelligent lawyer. He's a lawyer. So I'm like, we need a lawyer. We need someone who makes sure the arguments are super solid and unimpeachable. Mm. And we just came together in the next fucking, we, we did three months of nonstop fucking work. And it was, it was a lot, bro. It was a lot. It was painful. By the end, it got painful. Like it, it was... There was a lot of late nights, a lot of sleep in the studio. Miles McCreary, here's another thing. Like, we just, this kid Miles was filling up pools in Florida. And he was doing our images originally. So I brought him on. I was like, why don't you look over the image team, right? Because we were with this production company called Jax. A lot of really great people mm -hmm. over at Jax as well. And this guy, the images didn't come in how I wanted them at first. And, like, I kind of had a little blow up. And I said, Miles, you're in charge of images. And this guy's never worked in entertainment his entire life. He just knows Photoshop. And he starts running a team of editors. And it was just this perfect experiment on like just investing in people who you think are fucking competent and have the same like vision as you and, and the same level of like expectation of content. 
like nothing makes me more comfortable than like having a team of people that have as high expectations for the content as me. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you have yes. motherfuckers that they don't care to put out anything, I get anxiety around that. Yes. But these guys won't let me put out something that's not good. That's perfect. So it's just like that's a great relationship, bro. It is. It has been fucking great, and I hope none of them listen to this and ask for more money. But <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but like they fucking murdered it, man, and they fucking they well, stepped up. That's beautiful man. that you give these guys this opportunity too, and you know you find these competent guys that are willing to hustle. I don't care about your credits, bro. I really do not care. Like I, I do not care about the followers, none of that shit. Are you competent? Do you have the same drive and are you willing to spend the late nights with me? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to spend late nights and I have like very high expectation of people and I work with. And you can with. hang. You got to be able to hang. Yeah. So that's everything. You got to be able to bust balls. Yes. And you got to be able to take it too. <laughs> it's you know? And not the, easy. you know the guy Dove, did you see the guy? Mm -hmm. I, that's my first friend in college. Really? He's my first friend. He was in entertainment for a while and um, he, was, he was producing stuff. He was doing it in Italy and like he was doing stuff here. He was an agent for a little bit and I was like, bro, just stop kissing everybody's ass to get a project done just come over here let's fucking do this and he ends up executive producing it wow it's like a family affair dude it's that's that, amazing and the coolest thing about it and then i'll fucking stop talking about it i even feel weird talking about it but like we built up enough fucking equity outside of the industry to do the project we wanted to do with them do you know what i'm saying like yes. there you get to tell netflix the things you want Chappelle gets to tell Netflix the things he wants. Kevin gets to tell Netflix the things they want, right? Like in terms of they could give you a note and you could be like, I would really prefer it this way. I respect your opinion, but I prefer. There's a few people in the world that get that. And we built up enough confidence and like and trust in not only the market with the people, but also with them that they were just like, yeah, do what you no, want. that you go hard. Son, it's, it's wild. You go hard. It you is go wild. real hard. Like I was watching. I was like, <laughs> I wonder if Netflix is going to tell them to pull back. Nope. Bro, nope, there's no pulling back. It's Dude, there was one thing that we had to remove. What was it? It was, and this is a legal thing. Oh. And it was a joke we had, and it was a non sequitur. It was a joke about, it was a, you know, I said Trump with no experiences, Trump, uh, who had no experiences uh, with viruses outside of the ones he got from Stormy. It's a, it's a throwaway joke. Right. They go, you can't have that line. And I go, why? He goes, well, you're alleging that Stormy Daniels has, you know, STDs. Can you just change it to whores? Well, here's the thing. She's a whore. <gasps> so, like, no, no, but for a living. That's she, what she she's does. She's an adult star. A star. Sorry. Uh, whatever. She's a performer, adult performer. I've seen her perform. I went to the strip club. I saw her. Guys in MAGA hats, front row. It was the most hilarious really? thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it was amazing. It was in That's Texas, as a matter of fact. And, uh, that is hilarious. Yeah, it's, it was, it, she was wearing, like, flapper heels. From like the twenties, they're like the thick ones. Ooh. Yeah, it was it was it was but it was really good. Probably has bad ankles. Bad. Older lady. You know what I mean? Rough. <laughs> Point is, they said we had to take that line out. And I go, why? And they go, no, no, you have to understand. It's not about insulting. For a living, she fucks people for money. If you say she has STDs, that could affect her ability to make a living. Wow. And I was like, Oh, okay, yeah, I can cut that. Like to me, I was Did you I, change it? I just removed the line. I didn't care about Stormy. Right. Like I, it, it was just convenient to fit the little. It's literally jokes like about viruses. we we try to have a joke every in every line. Right. So right. I'm just like, okay, what's a little fun? Oh, a Stormy. We have other Stormy jokes in there. Right. But when they were like, this is an illegal thing to do because there's no proof that she's had it, and I was like, wow. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. That was the only note, and you see what's in that fucking thing. <laughs> Bro, there's some pictures where I'm it's like, how did amazing. they not see this? No language notes, no nothing. What do you think is the wildest? The Terry Schiavo thing is wild. It's pretty <laughs> wild. I don't want to give any of it away. I want people to watch it. But it's great. It's it's they very much in the line of the stuff you've already done on Instagram. Right. Which is what I worried about. Like, you worry that something someone gets involved. I don't worry about Netflix because Netflix has never given me a fucking single note. Yeah. Not a single note. Right. All the wild shit I put out in my specials, yeah. they're like, okay, let's go. Yeah, they, they never had any problems with it. Because you're you. Yeah. The, the young comic coming up might not have that. Well, they, they censored Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz did, did a Terry Crews joke uh, about Me Too. Mm -hmm. He had a funny Terry Crews joke uh, about uh, like... Terry Crews doing those underwear ads yeah, and of yeah, course yeah. dude's yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna try to grab his dick yeah, like yeah, what the yeah. fuck do you think yeah, these yeah. guys are at home watching that it. shit yeah, yeah. bouncing your titties on it's a funny bit and they're like no you can't make fun of me too but it's because you know he was on the 
that whatever they call it that that what did they call it the degenerates is that what they call yeah, it yeah the yeah, yeah yeah segment so it's a shorter set and it wasn't a Joey Diaz comedy special where you're just going to see Joey Diaz. It's just stand-up right. comedy, and yeah. they have more editorial control. He was very upset, though. He didn't like it at all. Yeah, I could it see really bothered. And the bit was a murderous bit. Yeah. He did the bit at the comedy store, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. It was the best take on Me Too ever. Yeah. Because nobody feels bad about a fucking super athlete like Terry Crews getting his dick grabbed by some guy that he could literally throw through a fucking yeah. wall. Yeah. So it's not like he's a victim physically. So you can make fun of him in a way that you can never make fun of a woman exactly. getting sexually assaulted. Also, or, like or, you've been around white guys. Like mm -hmm. that's what we do. We tap each other's dicks. This is like I a think very common the guy who did it was on drugs and probably was just out of his mind and was being silly or something. I don't know. But you know, Terry Crews made a big deal out of it and Joey Diaz mocked him. Yeah. And when Joey Diaz mocked him, Netflix is like, Nope, not, really? not that one. Yeah. But maybe it wasn't Netflix. Maybe it was the producer of the show. That's maybe it was a director of the show. Yeah. Maybe it was some someone involved who didn't want to have their name on something. Right. Also, this was like what two years ago or something like that when the Me Too shit was at its height. Yeah, where people were super nervous. Yeah, but they didn't have any problem with my Harvey Weinstein bit, where uh, I said, "What was the the, well, the Harvey?" I try to remember exactly how it went, but the the bit was basically. That um, if if someone like that, if Harvey Weinstein did that shit to my daughter, I would want to fuck him up. I go, but if Harvina Weinstein offered <laughs> my son a legitimate contract, <laughs> I'd look at him. I go, dude, you're gonna be Batman. <laughs> and it was it's great. It was this this whole bit about uh, if I I go yeah. I forget how it went. I forget my bits that after, is true. The, after I abandoned them. But it was basically, it's true. yeah, it was basically saying that uh, a guy who fucks a woman for money, like nobody feels bad for you. Yeah. Oh, you had to eat her pussy for a Ferrari. You gonna be okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nobody feels bad for you. Yeah. But a girl who holds herself out for a movie with Weinstein, and look, I'm sure a lot of those women were assaulted. I'm sure a lot of those women are telling the truth. Right. Most of them. Yeah. But there was a few hoes in there that knew what they were doing. Had I'm to. sure. Had to. Yeah. They, everybody, they knew the game. And that, that game, and and forget about out. Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Like, that game has been in, in Hollywood forever where these disgusting producers yeah, fuck these girls creeps. and they make them stars. Yeah. Creeps. They're creeps. Yeah. But, and it's like, if that, you know what? Maybe, maybe everybody would feel better about it if they were just blatant. Like if they're creeps, but they're like, yo, I'm a creep, but I'm going to get you an Oscar. Nah. I think he did do that. I think Weinstein actually did do that. According to Whitney, Whitney was telling me, Whitney's got some wild information. Was he shooting his shot? Uh, not at him. Not at her. But she Is was she telling upset me. about that? No, Whitney's so funny, funny that she could be like, well, what did you not see in me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> she would probably stop. Like, but hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait now. Yeah. <laughs> one seems like, nothing? we'd like you to write on the show. She's yeah. like, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. whoa. Um, no, she was basically saying that he he made deals and he was known for sticking to his deals. And it's one of the reasons why it was so successful. It's like he would tell these gals, look, I'll fuck you mm -hmm. and I'll make you a star. And he would actually make them a star. Like really did what he said he was going to do. If you're upfront about it and you're not abusing them and you're not threatening their career if they say no, I don't see that much wrong with that. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that negotiation. If you start threatening their careers, if they say no, yes. that's where it goes wrong. Because you're that removing, is what he and, did. He, and that's fucked that up. You're removing their freedom. Yeah. But if they were like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna try it somewhere else," and he was like, "All right, that's good. Best of luck." Yeah, there was a lot of lawsuits that made a lot of sense in, in that regard. And he got know? clipped, right? Like, yeah. isn't he, or is he back home because of no, Corona? He's in jail. Oh, they he's didn't let him jail. out. No, no. He, I think he's 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 had COVID twice. I think you can get it again. Some people can if you have a shit immune system. Nah, that's yeah. soft, bro. A small number of people have been documented as having COVID twice. I knew he had COVID in jail a long time ago, right. but I read something recently about him having COVID again. I don't know if that's again or if that's at all. Yeah, well, it, the, the, the wording in the article says they've pushed his... Uh, lawyers on both sides agreed to push his trip back for a second time due to coronavirus. So maybe They're just trying to get him out of there. It, it says he ex escapes extradition to L.A. 
transportation of someone from New York to California. Oh, so he's got yeah, he's got another case in California. Like he, so he's been convicted uh, in New York. He's going to go to LA, and they that's been pushed back because of coronavirus. How does this guy not kill himself? Eleven counts of rape faces 140 years behind bars. Of how has nobody killed him? How has nobody in jail taken him out? Don't they usually do that? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's child rape is the big one, right? If you're if you're a child rapist, because oh, yeah, a lot over. of those guys that are in jail, yeah. their life of fucked up crime and craziness because started out of, because of being molested. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, there's quite a few, quite quite a few, quite a few violent offenders who were molested while they were children. And they just were never they never recovered from it. They're devastated by it. I'm okay though if they take out child rapists. Yeah, I feel nothing with that. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. That's yeah. vigilante justice. Low key. And it's always been that way. Like that's the one thing that people have never had a problem with, right? When people mm. find out about someone getting uh, killed in jail that was a child rapist, and you're like, all right, always chalk been... it up to the game. The dark thing is that child rapists wind up raping children. Uh, rather, rather, rather uh, people who've been raped as children end up wind doing up the same thing, being child rapists. Mm. That's that's the darkest part about it, is that these child rapists <clears throat> come from uh, abuse themselves. They've been mm. abused. It's a real common thing that people abused as children wind up abusing others. So you can abuse that into somebody? That's terrifying. I don't know what it is, but if you really wanted to think about it, it's almost like a fucking vampire bite. Yeah. Like something horrific like that. Like you you give them a sickness. You abuse a child when they're young and then you make them do the same. It's just it's What do we do with shit. those people? What is the I don't know. You can't fix it. This is the pro our understanding yeah. of human psychology and like how the mind works and how to fix like real pathological issues like that. It's mm. like so limited. And and also, but you if also someone rapes a yeah. kid, like what is is it if you fix them and then just let them go, there's no retribution, is there no like, Yeah, cuz you've hurt that person, oh you need to pay for what you've done. Ruin them oftentimes yeah. forever. Yeah, you what need are you to laugh at, Jamie. Harvey, he he, uh, he got visited last week by his 27-year-old actress girlfriend in prison in New York. Wow. While wow. he's asking to be wow. Wow, taken girl. out. Wow, girl right there. Let me see what this girl looks like. Wow. I, I, he's there. 68. I need wow. to see this gal. Ali, Alexandra Vino. He's probably he's listening, baby. I'm telling Oh, my God. Oh, she's yeah, hot she as pees. fuck. That's Total insane. Peace. Is that real? Total peace. What? Oh, Wow. What? Total peace, bro. Go to the bikini one, dude. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's a total peace right there. She the wants it. The world is crazy. That girl wants fame yeah, but in a way that you've that never experienced. It's amazing that Harvey's going to give it to her. Like, do, does she know something we don't? Is yeah. he telling her something? Yeah, he's, he's telling her out? I still got connects. Like, I'm still, you know, part wow. of the... Wow. Is he getting out? Wow. Or she just got to go once a month and he's paying all the bills. That's the other thing. Like, that could be sugar daddy situation. It like, could easily be I'll that, I'll come right? once a month, like, yeah. kiss you on the mouth or whatever like that. We probably can't even touch because you're locked in jail. Right. You don't think I have conjugal visits in jail. 68. She stayed for several hours chatting. They yeah. put a blanket over both of their laps. And no, they 16, did it. No, no, no. no. Oh. Just made that up. They were in the back rooms kept specially for prisoners, involuntary protective custody, he got up several times to use the bathroom, said the source. He could still only get about with a walker, just like when he was in court. But the difference in between then and now is he has a lot more color in his cheeks. He didn't look so deathly ill. Wow. Poor girl, man. That's great. Poor girl, right? Know, sad you shit. Go through. That's a sad way to live your life. Yeah. Well, Andrew Schultz, let's wrap this bitch up. Bring okay, it home. Brother. Uh, your show is available right now on Netflix. Uh, Schultz Saves America. Yes, sir. There it is. Netflix cool. special uh, bro, for... They've been clowning me for the Photoshop that they did Yeah, they, on they me. smoothed you out, bro. But They gave you some filters. You know what's fucked up? Is it like... Why do they do that? I don't know, but I looked at it and I was like, yeah, that's kind of what I look like. Like That's how skewed my version of myself is. It's not too bad, but it looks like CGI. You look like you belong in Ready Player One. They <laughs> Right? Oh, I, that'd be a great uh, first of all, that movie is unbelievable. Yeah. It's a great movie. That's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Um, but yeah, they fixed my nose. They, they took the dent from my nose. They did that with me too. Can we go to Joe's? Go oh, to like, can we do a side by side. They did it to of... Triggered from 2016, from four years ago. Hold on. 
Let's yeah, they, uh, I, I watched it. I was like, why am I so smooth? Oh, like, go, that go, picture, go, the go, one with go, the, go, go, the go. lights up, up there. there. And I wanted to get on their site. This is oh, okay. the best yeah, version of it. Oh, yeah, smooth the shit out of me, Yeah, bro. you're a sweet potato, bro. It's smooth. Yeah, look, look at this. that. <laughs> All my yeah. under eyeball Dude. bags are gone. Look what they did to my face. It doesn't even you're look like gold. me. If I showed up, but that's just lighting. Yeah. But if I showed up with, with the, that face, people would be like, what the fuck happened to you, man? Like, go back up. The other one was a cartoon. But just go, but just make that bigger. Like, where's my eye? Eyes. Yeah. What happened to my? Why does my face go straight <laughs> from my eyes down to my mouth? Dude, you look like a Bond villain. Like, <laughs> they did like uh, they botoxed me. They yeah. botoxed me up. Like all these. Yeah, lines. you have not a single wrinkle no lines. except the one Fear Factor one. They kept that in. They kind of did, but they yeah. even toned that down. That all head my forehead is cleanly lines, shaved that's though. Botox. That's clean shaved. But right even there. my forehead lines are disappeared. Yeah. That's nonsense. Why do they do that? I think they want to make us cute. Aww. I know. They want to make, but I was kind of feeling myself in that picture for you a little good. bit. You, you look good, I mean? bro. Thanks, you don't need bro. that bullshit. The lines don't do you wrong. Andrew Schultz, yeah. you're a bad motherfucker. Thank I love you. you. I'm so happy love you're you, out there. Swinging haymakers. Thank you, man. Representing real comedy. Let's go. And uh, again, uh, Schultz Saves America. It's on now on yes. Netflix. Go get it, kids. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world.